You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 114 of The Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Friday, May 5th, 2023. And not only is it May 5th, but it is also National Red Dress Day. So, so you know that. Uh, that's the day where we uh, have a particular awareness uh, for missing Indigenous uh, women and girls and two-spirited persons. Um, with first me, I'm learning of this. Uh, I, th- I believe it started last year, officially oh. was the first one. Uh, uh, of course, with me, as always, is my good friend, my pal, Mr. Grizzly, sporting some um, shades, because I think, I think... That we need to pack up the ark because we may actually have sun. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm just looking at the weather report right in front of me here at the Beaver Lodge, and I see sun all throughout the day with some clouds, of course. But hey, we'll take mm-hmm. it because maybe this finally means some tennis for the beaver. <sighs> Been waiting so long for it. Hadn't had my racket restrung. I'm ready to go. Uh, I just found out this year apparently that you're supposed to have your racket restrung. Once a year for every day of the week you play. So if you play four times a week, you should have your racket restrung four times. I did not know that. <laughs> this is only the second time in my life I've had my racket restrung. <laughs> I figured I didn't hit the ball that hard, so I didn't really need to do it often. But turns out you do. Mm. So turns out yesterday, last year, when I was winning some matches, I was doing it with a subpar, with subpar strings. So I, I guess that means wow. I'm better than I think I am, maybe? Who knows? We'll find out. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, of course, a thank you goes to our sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. And of course, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver Pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And look at that. Look at the weather cap. We actually we actually have some glare. Yeah, it's Ooh. very bright out. And look at the blueness of the sky there in the top uh, left-hand corner there. Yeah, I That's tried to put it I tried to put a polarizing filter on it because the sun is shining directly into the lens. And this is the best <laughs> I could come up with. 
<laughs> um, today we have a Friday morning bite, I believe, because usually oh, we yeah. have more time on Fridays. All right. But before we get into anything, let's do our most important duty, which is saying hello and good morning to you, Mr. Grizzly, and asking you, how's your mental health today? Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. Um, my mental health is spectacular because the sun is shining. Um, I had yeah, to take the, the shades off. Because, uh, these are polarized, and I have a polarizing filter on my, my screen, so everything was black unless I tilt my head. to. to, to I couldn't see what I was looking at. <laughs> Uh, so you look like one of those, you know, you know, those rant guys you always see in the, you know, there's always that rant guy in his car and he's wearing a pair of sunglasses like this and he has a big beard, although his beard isn't combed and neat and, and, and flattened That's and cared strange. for like this one is right. So, you know, it's usually bedraggled, a bedraggled bearded dude going, I'll tell you what I can look just like I can walk amongst them. <laughs> ah, so we have the Grizzly sporting different types of eyewear this morning for your fashion pleasure kits. And in the headlines, there is a lot going on. Um, we tried to talk about this on the other show but uh, a couple of days ago, but I was having audio issues. Uh, but we have uh, Arthur Puzlowski found guilty uh, in Alberta on two of the three counts. And I think that uh, the third count isn't fully decided yet. Um, so uh, that's happening. And that should uh, present some interesting uh, twists in the, the Alberta election uh, because now um, – that phone call with Danielle Smith back then was with a suspected criminal who was still innocent until proven guilty. But now that phone call was with a criminal mm -hmm. because now he's been proven guilty. <laughs> so mm, that's going to be interesting. And also uh, because it's a red dress day in the United States, uh, I believe for the first time ever, uh, Joe Biden uh, President Joe Biden actually marked uh, today, May 5th, 2023, as uh, mi Missing or Murdered Indigenous Persons Awareness Day in the United States. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're starting, uh, they're starting to catch on. They're talking about uh, residential schools over there as well, as well uh, Mr. Grizzly. But if you put the, the asset up here, um, it says at Washington, White House, Washington, May 4th, 2023, Missing or Murdered Indigenous Persons Awareness Day 2023 by the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a massive step. That's you, a huge step. You got to understand something, okay? For those of you who might not be aware, and, and, and I say this with that precursor, Canada, we have a terrible history of how we've treated our Indigenous peoples. It's no secret. Right. And, and we're acknowledging it finally. And we've we've done a terrible job in the United States of America. They went for genocide. Mm -hmm. it, they shot indigenous people for sport. I, I'm not kidding. Now I'm going back like 150, 200 years. Right. We're going back to the mid 1800s, the, the late 1700s. I mean, it, it really was. Uh, the white man came and decided this land is ours and we're angry at you for being on it before we got here. So yeah, yeah, this is a massive step. Um, I, I never ever thought I would see anything like that, honestly. Uh, so it's a big surprise to me and, and a welcome surprise to see that, you know, an older, and, and, and again, uh, Joe Biden, a boomer, an older generation gentleman is acknowledging the, the ills, the wrongs that were done by our, our ancestors. And we need to try and make amends for it as much as possible. Now, I know there's the, the land back demand, and I'm like, I don't know how to wade into the waters on that because I personally don't own a damn thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I pay money to exist, right? Right. right. So um, I don't know how that I don't know how that will work out. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the um, people, oh, of course, <laughs> the internet's being a little crazy. Uh, but one of the people that we have uh, to thank uh, for this day, uh, well, not this day, I guess. Well, yeah, probably this day is this lady here. Her name is uh, Leah Gazan, 
and she's an NDP MP uh, from Winnipeg Center. And um, you probably have heard her name, uh, Mr. Grizzly. We have an asset up there with our, yeah, her image. There, I'll try and blow it up so we can see her a little better. There we go. Um, this lady here uh, led the entire House, uh, I believe, to vote unanimously uh, in favor of um, some motions uh, with regard wow. to, to Indigenous people, uh, including, I believe, she was the one that got the House uh, to recognize uh, officially that uh, residential schools was, in fact, genocide. And I believe uh, she is also behind the push uh, to create a system similar to Amber Alert, but called uh, Red Dress Alerts, uh, to go out every time a uh, Indigenous woman or girl goes missing. Um, so when you're talking about uh, MPs that are not like everybody else, that care about issues and that are in the house to do the right things in the right way, uh, Leah Gazan. So if you are in a Winnipeg center, uh, she's a person you should probably reelect. Yeah. And um, she obviously lives in Ottawa part time. So, hey, Leah, if you're up for a, um, a coffee, I'd love to uh, have a chat because uh, what you've done is historic. And uh, yep. full respect, full, full respect. respect, full respect. Uh, hey, that's how these things start, right? Mm -hmm. One voice on an issue, relentless. You got to step up to the fore, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. And I mean, look where it's going, right? I mean, the states is talking about it now. The states is talking about residential schools. Um, you know, Casti Caron and uh, leaders of the indigenous community met with the Pope, and then they got to their official mm -hmm. uh, apology. Um, wasn't uh, talked about all that much, uh, but uh, the indigenous uh, people of Canada also got uh, apologies from the Archbishop of Canterbury um, a little bit before the Pope, if I remember correctly. Because mm -hmm. um, I think we talked about it, but it almost didn't get any news because all the attention uh, was on the Pope. Um, so it was barely a one-day um, story. But they did apologize, uh, and it's led to some interesting things uh, at the moment because uh, the coronation mm -hmm. of King Charles is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, there was, for the first time ever, a meeting between the monarch and leaders of indigenous community. I did see As that. organized by Mary Simon who is um, the representative of the king in Canada as the governor general. And at that meeting were present uh, Natan Obed of Inuit, uh, I always say this wrong, I'm sorry, Tepirit, Te, Tepirit Kanatami. Mm. Uh, I apologize for uh, mispronouncing that if I got that wrong. Um, but uh, someone for whom we have a lot of respect and admiration. Uh, and Roseanne Archibald, uh, the national leader of the Assembly of uh, First Nations was present, and also present was Cassidy Caron. Hey, Cassidy. Who we had, yeah, on the show, uh, the president of the Metis National Council. And uh, so She's they all had, she is, she's absolutely amazing. Um, and so, as we mentioned uh, the other day, there are things that are changing for the coronation, like, for example, um, the swearing allegiance to the king will not happen through uh, an homage of the peers, but will happen through an homage of the people. So everybody will have in a moment during the ceremony, wherever they are, to stop and say a pledge aloud, uh, allegiance to, to the king, and that there will be female members of the clergy and members of other faith, and there will be songs in all four languages of the UK. Uh, so there seems to be some outreach, and this is another form of it here. And... Um, well, they had some pretty interesting things to say. Now, the Prince Charles had come to Canada um, not too long before his mother's passing uh, mm -hmm. to mark uh, her 70th uh, jubilee because she couldn't travel herself. And while he was here for those uh, few days, he actually made a point of meeting with the Indigenous community at that point as well. Um, so... Um, he's previously endorsed the calls to action that have come along uh, from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but uh, the Crown has offered no apologies yet. Um, 
I think one may be forthcoming, though, because he seems to be on board with this, eh? He seems to be somewhat on board with that. And it's the same thing with uh, the things having to do with slavery, particularly in the Mm -hmm. Caribbean nations. Uh, Jamaica is looking to become a republic again as well, like Barbados did last year. Um, So there seems to be uh, there seems to be a move to you know these things always are slow, like real little step, little step, and eventually they come up to something, right? I don't know why they they feel they need to do this slowly, but I guess it's like thousand years of tradition don't turn overnight. Yeah, well, it it would be his uh, if he does, you know, formally apologize. That would be his legacy as as a monarch. Yep. Because yep. his his le- he's he's going to be short lived, yes. Right, because he's he's getting up there. I mean, he's he's not a young man. Let, let's say he has thirty years, and that's being generous, generous right? Maybe twenty twenty five. But let's say he has thirty years. It's not a long time to uh, when you consider the reign his mother had seven, mm-hmm. like you know, seven decades, man. Yeah, the for so many of us, millions of us around the world, that's the only monarch of england we've ever known yeah i think she was the second the longest reigning monarch ever in history yes yes or something. so i mean you know and for the coronation like i keep on mentioning i'm not particularly a monarchist i'm not particularly anti-monarchist i like the pageantry you know mm-hmm. and i know it'll be a whole bunch of you know, you know complicated to get all you know it doesn't really matter to me ultimately um but there's never been one in my life. So it's really interesting that like 4% of Canadians only are saying that they're interested in watching. It's like, there's never been one in most of our lives. Like just out of pure curiosity, wouldn't you want to? <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'll probably be watching out of curiosity more than anything else. It's not like I'm going to be standing in front of the TV. And go, Whoa, Charles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I've never seen a coronation and I might not, might not see another one. You never know. Well, it, it, the coverage starts on, on CBC at 4 a.m. our time, mm. uh, at Eastern Standard Time. So if you live in the Eastern Standard Time Zone or Eastern Daylight Standard Time Zone, <laughs> sorry, uh, 4 a.m. is when the coverage starts. I don't, you know, it depends on where you live in the country, but I'm going to be on the road at 9 a.m. driving down to Saratoga Springs, New York to go see Connie Han on uh, saturday right so i'm very excited about that but i don't know if i doubt very much i'll be up to watch it at four now i still even on the weekends i still wake up at five so maybe we'll see i'll roll out of bed if you know if yeah, I i'm not I'll set my if alarm i remember up. i'm not setting them if i remember yeah. i'll wake up <laughs> at five i might get out of bed at six i turn on the tv and usually i i, I, I don't turn it on to broadcast It'll probably be rebroadcast at some point anyway, if you miss it at four, I would assume. Well, I'm sure we could watch it on YouTube at some point in time if we're really interested. Do I need yeah. to see it live? No. No, probably not. Probably not. Um, so, yeah, that's going on. And uh, so of him has been said, well, he's different from his mother. I think most Canadians know Her Majesty the Queen much more, but I feel the king is going to be... Uh, good king. He's very conscious of what Canada is all about. He understands the renewed relationship that Canada is undergoing with the Indigenous peoples of Canada. Um, so that's been said. And uh, specifically, uh, Casti Caron had probably had the best quote uh, said, um, we were given the space to talk individually about who we are and then to talk about our priorities. Relationships are built over 100 cups of tea. And today we had our first cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I saw that. I'm like, well, well done, Cassidy. Well she done. is classy. We got to get her back on. I show. love her. Yeah, I do too. But I have a different attraction to her than you do. But I'm old enough to be your dad, so let's let's. She's like a daughter to me. But she is just, just so poised. She oh, is yeah. not flustered at all. Meeting no, the no. Girl, meeting heads of state, meeting the king. She's just. Except that, that's has, the thing I loved about their interview with her. She's just so clear. She's not intimidated by anyone, which I really no. enjoy. This this comment from Linda that I put on the screen, and and that's my thought process too, Linda. Uh, when you see all that pageantry, how many disadvantaged people that money could have helped? Um, there are major problems in the UK right now with homelessness and hunger, and right, mm-hmm. how much money is being spent on that? You know, and and Christian. Uh, spent many years as a homeless teen so i feel that same way um that this is 
you know, it's it's divided loyalties. I don't have a loyalty to either one of them, actually. But I, I'm trying to find the right verbiage here. I I, um, I enjoy the pomp and circumstance. However, I fully acknowledge that all of the ridiculous amounts of money and security being spent on this for multiple nations, because a lot of nations will be attending this, mm-hmm. could have been spent on something better, like, I don't know, making this world a better place. Uh, you know, helping, you know, it's, it's pretty hard for somebody who is homeless living on the streets of London to get excited about watching, uh, you know, a man who's worth what, a billion dollars be mm-hmm. feted and celebrated because he gets to wear a new crown. It, 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 it seems like it's yep. ridiculous when you get right down to it. Yep. It's another thing. It's the word I like to use a lot these days because it seems to fit so well into everything that happens on a daily basis lately it is absurd mm. I see. see and i i've always have a split thing with that myself and i think i've mentioned it already on the show and it's like there's always a need mm-hmm. right and we're all doing it mm-hmm. like it's easier for us to look up at the crown and say well look at all the money they're spending because they're spending so much i mean it is ridiculous amounts um but all right, you know, we kind of know this going in, but I mean, any one of us in our regular life that has a little too much more than for just what's basic, who mm-hmm. decides to spend it, decides to spend it on something frivolous or just something nice for us yeah. or something we don't need. Well, that's all money we could be given ourselves to someone else too. Agreed. Right? I, there's yeah, there's I, a lot I, of us yeah. looking, looking up from, or looking up from our high horses too. Yeah. Right? Oh. I mean, we, but but this is a goal thing, right? We we talk about the bread and circuses, and yes, there's always a need, and I you know it's like you know we can't always focus. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. if we were all 100 percent good and altruistic people, we would always be focusing on need somewhere, and we would never none of us would ever have nice things because there's always a need. Mm-hmm. So there's there's this balance thing, and um, I mean, if you ask me, one one, do you want to spend money on a ceremony or you want to feed people? Of course, I want to feed people. Yeah. That's not even up for debate, right? Right. Um, but this, this, I, culture, co- culture and tradition and ceremony and whatnot cost money. So, uh, uh, Emi, so it's Emi, weird. Emi Yoka, Yoko Yama de Almeida. Yeah. I hope I said your name correctly. I love that name. It's not, it's not money that the royal family worked hard for themselves is what she said. Right. Yeah, that's right. true. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely, absolutely true. So that's what I mean. It, it becomes this complication. I just, you know, when we talk about virtue signaling, like these are the types of things, you know, the Olympics. Oh, well, well why do you don't need the Olympics? Well, yes, nobody needs the Olympics, right? <laughs> actually, Daniel, actually, Daniel, on a Friday morning, this show can go on for two or three hours because I work from yeah. home today and yeah. I'm, I do tech support. So I can, uh, we can run this show for, hours on a Friday. So it's more than an hour. So feel free, sir, if you would like to comment. Yes, yes, please. And please, yes, do, do comment. We love this. Um, so it's, yeah, I'm always torn. I have to say, I'm always torn with that, with that too. But you know, the, the, I can't say that I'm against <laughs> a little pageantry. <laughs> it would be highly hypocritical, a queen beaver to yeah. say that one hundred percent of the time, we should forego pageantry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. I mean, I uh, uh, and I must not be a hypocrite. <laughs> So I shamelessly <laughs> admit the queen likes the bling. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, Kit Saucy, I would say that this is a good opportunity for the monarchists to have a goodbye to the ceremonies of old and embrace the future slimmed down monarchy. That, however, yes. Yeah, that, that, yeah, this, this could, this uh, could be the, the, the turning point, right? They could, uh, this would be like the final flourish. Here we are, henceforth in the future. It will be. You know, and, and like, I mean, obviously, unless something strange happens, uh, the next king will be William. Mm-hmm. If it was Harry, if Harry was to be crowned king, because he would be in line after William, mm-hmm. even though they, he, 
he, did he renounce his title or if they, I don't know what's, hey, you can't, I don't know. I'm not a monarchist, but let's say, let's say Harry was to be crowned king. I think he would really downplay it, but that's mm-hmm. just, me. I could be wrong. Maybe mm-hmm. he'd be up for all of it. Who knows? Um, I, I tried to, I listened to passages from his book that, you know, he narrated himself, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but there's that one passage that everybody's stuck on <laughs> uh, his oscillating unit. How does your unit oscillate? Mm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and also, also, you know, Harry, some things can still be private. You don't have to divulge absolutely everything. That's yes. something I would not have divulged. Yes, exactly, exactly. We have a uh, Kit Jen. Not saying, if, yes, Kit Jen said, if Charles had a simple coronation and donated the money to charity, I'd have some respect. But this Victorian pomp, and there again, I agree with you, Jen. But then I see on the other side of the ledger, how old is Charles now? 74. He'll be how 75 he, in November. How long has he been waiting for this moment? Yeah. I I would probably I'm only I'm only a beaver. Mm-hmm. And I have and I am I have moral failings like everyone else. I think if I had waited 60 something years for mummy to pass on so I could finally get my promotion, I would want all the bells and whistles I put in the damn time. <laughs> I've been in the shadow for 60 years. I'm riding in that jumpy, bumpy carriage. I earned this. <laughs> he, I'm sure he does feel like that. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, seriously. I, 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 listen, I, I hear you. I hear you, Christian. I've been waiting 45 years for fairness. No sympathy. I get it. But it's a human thing. When you've waited 45 years for something. As you know, mm-hmm. you want what's yours. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, it's just human nature. So, you know, I can't, I cannot sit here and say that I would be any better <laughs> in his shoes. I would like to think I would be better <laughs> because I don't have those trappings and it's easy for me to say, I would like to think I'm better, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't, I cannot honestly say. I cannot honestly say if I had waited that long, if I wouldn't want all those bells and whistles. I don't think I might have, I'd be, I might, I might be human enough to be pulling a David Dingwall. I'm entitled to my entitlements. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just wanted to to comment on Jen's comment. Jen is uh, first generation Scottish, so she has feelings regarding the monarchy. And I'm all I have to say about Mm -hmm. that is, well, Jen, if it's not Scottish, it's clap. (laughs) <laughs> you remember that, i right? love that yeah. yes <laughs> anyway enough about the bling and the carriages and the horses and the incestuous family drama and mm. let's move on <laughs> i have something positive i'm going to post please right 972 million dollars canada's global trade surplus in march easily beating analyst forecasts of $200 million surplus, despite exports falling to their lowest level since February 2022. That's just shy of a billion. Just shy of a billion dollar surplus. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like, holy yeah. crap. And, 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 and let's, let's review that again. Despite exports falling to their lowest level. Right. So... Had exports been at, uh, you know, a, a median level, they'd be well over a billion. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 And we are going to be getting uh, jobs numbers uh, from Statistics Canada later this morning. I was just checking to see if they were out yet, because sometimes they do come out while we're on the show. Um We're expecting, uh, economists are expecting about 12,000 to 20,000 jobs being added last month. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see. We don't know yet because uh, sometimes we get a surprise. You never know. Uh, but the United States recently uh, um, released uh, Q1 numbers and said that uh, their economy, uh, while it did grow in uh, Q1, it was only uh, by 1.1% uh, mm-hmm. when the expectations were for two. Um, the U.S. Fed recently um, 
raised uh, its interest rate another uh, quarter percentage and are hinting that that might be the last one for the while. Uh, meanwhile, the Bank of Canada governor, Tiff Macklem, is warning Canadians to not get too cozy with the fact that interest rates have stopped going up. Um, but the economic data would have to be would have to be showing something different because the trend is really showing a slowing down uh, of inflation. Uh, so it would really have to be showing uh, something really weird happening somewhere in the background, which could be, uh, again, some of those bank closures because uh, First Republic, which we talked about about a month and a half ago, uh, which was being saved uh, by an emergency infusion of some kind, um, still had more problems. Yeah, and and I just I was reading earlier where uh, TD Bank uh, was yes. looking at taking over. Um, oh darn it! What was the name? I don't uh, remember it now, but yeah, uh, they and they walked. It was a fourteen billion dollar deal that would give them access to four hundred branches across the U.S., expanding their their reach into the United States. Uh, but they're walking away from the deal, and that's going to cost them two hundred and fifty million dollars. But apparently, to them, that's lunch money, so they don't really care. I guess they yeah. backed out of the deal because it just wasn't beneficial to them. Yeah, uh, it was a $13.4 billion deal to buy First Horizon, and First Horizon stock tumbled 50% after the yeah, merger yeah. cost. And here's the thing. TD stock didn't 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 nope. even look at it. Just, uh, what? No, we're fine. We're good. We're just going to sail along here. Yeah, didn't absolutely. Touch it. Look, yeah. you want a sound investment? Invest in a Canadian bank. Canadian banks in the 21st century are like Swiss banks had been for about a century. Yeah, TD sure. Bank went up, TD Bank went up a quarter of a percent on the Toronto Dominion stock market when First Horizon dropped 50. So it's like we're backing out of this deal it's going to cost us 250 million dollars. Okay, well, uh, let's just rate the stock will just go up because because we're a Canadian bank and that's how things work. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're sidestepping something. It's like whoops. I think we're yeah. going to pass on that. It's a bad um, deal. We, we're going to step away from it. And and, and as a result, our, our margins are going to increase. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, say good morning to some of the kids. Good morning, Kit Saucy. Good morning, Kit Pete. How are you, mate? Lovely to see you this morning from uh, Down Under. Good morning, Kit Daniel, Kit Linda M, Kit Elaine, Kit Jen, Kit Miss Sadeka, Kit Christian, uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Kit Ellen, Kit Tavi G, thank you. And uh, thank you for helping us celebrate the weekend coming up. And if we've missed you, uh, well, we're very sorry about that, but we're glad that you're here. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get uh, some jobs numbers in today. And uh, hopefully that will be good news uh, for all of us. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah. I mentioned uh, to say that uh, with regard to uh, Red Dress Day and the Red Dress Alert system, um, it looks like it is going to happen uh, because a Liberal Party um, MP and Cabinet Minister Patty Haydu, uh reminded us that in the budget, $2.5 million had been uh, set aside over five years to lay the groundwork for a Red Dress Alert system. Hmm. So uh, it seems that uh, Leah Gazan's uh, push is uh, materializing. Very and that's cool. pretty rare when you're not an MP from a government governing party. Um, so that's uh, keep your eyes on the, this MP, Leah Gazan. She's going places. She's, she's getting things done. Oh, well, check this she's getting out. Getting things uh, done. Check this out. Look at that. Little less glare. Mm -hmm. guys and sunshine. There you go. Now, um, oh, I forgot to, oh, gee, I forgot. I had a lot of stuff going on about the corn, mm -hmm. coronation and stuff. Oh, well, anyway, we get, the, the big thing about the coronation, sorry to go back to that. I forgot about that. But the, the big thing is everybody's wondering if uh, Prince Harry was going to attend. So it seems mm. that he is going to attend, but uh, there's a little bit of controversy going on under uh, undercurrent of controversy going on if people haven't heard of it. But it seems that recent court filings revealed that uh, Prince Harry's legal efforts to get to the bottom of a 1990s phone hacking scandal in which Rupert Murdoch's media group of newspapers was involved. I think you remember that? Yeah, it was, it was big news when it happened. Like this, where news the, of the world. Yes, was, yeah, it was the news of the world. Yeah. Exactly. So it uh, appears that his 
he uh, filed notice that he was suing, but hasn't been able to file a statement of claim yet. And that the people from Fox are saying, well, we need to throw this case out because you know, we're allowed to have a speedy trial. And mm-hmm. it's been several years now since he's filed this notice and you know never filed a statement of claim. Well, it seems that his effort is being held up by a secret deal struck in 2020 by the royal family and the Murdoch group that would have settled the matter out of court for a substantial amount of money. Mm. Mm. Where have we heard about Rupert Murdoch group settling out of court for a substantial amount pay of it, money? Of pay it to make it go away. Yes. That's all he ever does. Pay it to make it go away. But in, see, it seems that it wasn't he that was paying to make it go away. It seems it's the royal family that wanted to avoid Prince William from having to testify. I wonder why that is. Mm. Laundry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little drama. <laughs> it's, what, drama. What, what, what would be a royal coronation without a soupçon of drama and intrigue, palace intrigue underneath? This is true. <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to write the history of this now, <laughs> and somebody's got to make it unboring. <laughs> uh, so we're waiting to hear about the jobs numbers later today. And um, we have some Canadians that are going through some tough times, uh, not financially, um, well, will be financially eventually, uh, but because, again, of uh, Mother Nature. And the way we've been treating her. Uh, Mm -hmm. Wildfire season has already started in Alberta. About 3,700 fellow Canadians in and around uh, Little Red River Cree Nation, which is about 800 kilometers north of Edmonton, have been evacuated to the town of High Level. Uh, High Level frequently uh, receives people when there are floods or wildfire emergencies. So once again, uh, the people of High High Level are... uh, showing the true Canadian hospitality and spirit and mm-hmm. being there for their neighbors. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, but more than 70 wildfires already are burning in Alberta and over half of them started over the course of the past 48 hours. Um, so that might uh, prove to be an interesting curveball election issue in Alberta. It was only a 28 day election. And uh, when wildfires um, that many start in a 48 hour period, that's an issue. Oh, yes. That's a political issue. Evacuation orders uh, and highway closures are also happening in British Columbia, not due to fire, but they're due to flooding and mudslides across the BC interior due to a week of record warm weather uh, that has uh, set records in 10 BC communities this week. And uh, that has led to accelerated mountain snowmelt. California is having the same issue at the moment. Uh, BC's Minister of Emergency Management has stated, we are seeing very high stream flows, communities like Cash Creek, and uh, in Cash Creek, 20 properties were under evacuation orders and a section of the highway is closed, closed due to heavy damage there. Um, but communities like Cash Creek are experiencing flooding, overtopping their dikes and emergency flood barriers. We anticipate that temperatures will continue to rise in the interior over the next day or so, along with heavy precipitation and leading into storms. And so unfortunately, it is likely that some of these communities are going to see conditions get worse in the immediate short term before they get better. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you are um, in the in those areas, please pay attention. Mm-hmm. Did we lose you there? there? Yeah, no, I just saw you asking me to toggle the noise, so I took a second to do that. Yeah, I did that um, like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just saw it now. <laughs> I was on a roll. Um, fair, enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, since I don't know how well it got through uh, on the episode to the kit, so um, I, excuse me if there's any repetition, um, but um, Archer Pawlowski. Yes. We need to, to talk about him. Um, he I was think found. The problem child is a is an understatement. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had. A, he's having some big problems. Um, he was found guilty. No, oh, I said. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. He was found guilty. 
in relation to the Coots border protest, uh, according to City News, the judge laid down a conviction, conviction for mischief for his role in protests against COVID-19 public health measures. Justice Gordon Krinky has also found Pawlowski guilty of reaching a release order following a trial in a Lethbridge courtroom. Um, Crown prosecutor said Pawlowski's impassioned speech to the truckers and Coots fanned the flames of unrest and convinced them to stay at the border crossing for another two weeks. Um... The Alberta NDP has been calling on Justice Minister Tyler Shandro to condemn the call made by continuing to press for an independent investigation into the matter. Quote, Pawlowski put the lives of police officers in danger, and then Daniel Smith tried to derail the Crown's prosecution of his crimes, NDP Justice critic Irfan Sabir said in a response to the news on Tuesday. Um, I'm trying to find uh, the Calgary Herald uh, is stating that while he has been found guilty, he probably got what he wanted because now he's basically able to cast himself as a martyr. And uh, when we played uh, some uh, clippings of him speaking on a previous show, uh, he likes to refer to people as snakes and scorpions and vipers. And uh, he did that again as well. Uh, you know, when the verdict came out, he said, uh, uh, he was counting her among the stapes and scorpions and vipers already at each other's throats, he said. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you have to remember on that call, he mentioned that he felt that he needed to come out swinging at her uh, because, uh, well, basically, but but you promised. Yeah. And uh, she wasn't following through on her promise. And uh, many people have made the comment that she seemed to be on that call speaking like she was uh, his servant more than the premier. Um, And she specifically mentioned pastors. We also pointed that out in when she was running for the leadership saying that, yeah, she did. She had to make sure that we take care of pastors and, you know, people that have been. So she was like pre laying this groundwork for him or speaking to him very specifically because all these people that self-declare pastors in order to get themselves immunity to do whatever that they want under the name of, pastorship um yeah they're listening for these words specifically very suspect right right so she went out of her way to men single out pastors beforehand to lay that groundwork um so yeah uh he's been found guilty on uh, two of the three charges and i'm trying to figure out uh specifically what happens with the third charge whether or not that goes uh, that may possibly go to trial again or something because it wasn't fully resolved. He didn't get um, unnecessarily a not guilty from what I can understand. Um, but um, yeah, this is not good. This is not good whatsoever uh, mm-hmm. for her. And I do not see um, how it is that she's going to get out of it. Now, she's the good. judge. Yeah, the judge in his decision said Mr. Pazlowski intended to incite the audience to continue the blockade, intended to incite protesters to commit mischief. He found that the preacher, quote, counseled other persons to interfere with the use of Highway 4 in a manner which rendered it useless. Um, now, Pavlovsky is completely unrepentant. Uh, he goes, I'm not ashamed of what I did. If I had a chance to do it again, I would do it again gladly. I stood with the truckers. I stood with the farmers. I stood with Canadians, said Pazlowski, to the crowd promising to pursue an appeal. Justice shall prevail. And this is taken from a CBC News story. And I'm sure the judge is going to love that, especially when uh, Crown lawyers take that quote and present, present it at sentencing. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's basically... Well, how do you say it? How do you say it? He's, um, he's spitting in the eye. Well, he's stepping on his own dick in the process. Right. Right. Oh, so yeah, he is, um, he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good. And he's definitely, I mean, this is clearly not his first offense. No. So the fact that he's a recidivist will uh, recidivist will be an aggravating factor. The fact that he's showing no remorse will be an aggravating factor. Um, so, um, yeah, there's the you know when when they when they tell talk to you about sentencing, they always say what the maximum is, right? Like this, you might get thirty years, you might get forty. That's the maximum. That's like if you were like the absolute worst criminal, with like with a rap sheet that's as long as your arm going into it, with you know no remorse, and you know you did like absolutely something horrible or 
you know, within the commission of the crime, right? Uh, so, I mean, you know, often you say 30 years and it ends up being like, you know, six years or four years or something. You go, oh my God, wow, come so little, you know, they were so, because there are things, right? And so if it's your first offense, well, then, you know, it's less, you know, if it's, and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of these things are not going to apply to him. <laughs> so he's setting himself up uh, for a really rough time. Um Oddly enough, it's really interesting that in all these articles that I'm uh, looking at right now, for some reason, um, there's not much uh, information about the actual ruling, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm still looking through some uh, some other articles to to see what they said here. Oh, there we go. Finally, some stuff on the, the ruling. Crown prosecutors told Poslowski's trial in Lethbridge, Alberta, that his impassioned speech to the truckers in February 2022 fanned the flames of unrest and convinced convinced them to stay at the border crossing for another two weeks. Pazlowski faces another charge under the Alberta Critical Infrastructure Defense Act of willfully damaging or destroying essential infrastructure. However, Crinky said he couldn't rule on that charge Tuesday because the defense has given a notice of constitutional challenge. So that's why the third charge, he hasn't been found guilty yet. I've been try- I, I knew that there was a reason specifically uh, that, that it wasn't like not guilty. It was right. just that, that there needed to be more. Um, so that's the thing that's going on. Again, I'm not quite sure how that, uh, what the constitutional challenge is and how that one will be resolved, but I'm guessing that that has to go through a court first, get a verdict on that, and then I guess there will be a separate trial on that third charge afterwards. Yeah. Well, and, and you, we need to, for those folks who might not be familiar with the charge of mischief, it's a serious charge in Canada. and yeah, it's, it's not, not like spray painting. No, it's not being a mischievous child and, and, you know, being curious. No, mischief is a serious criminal charge that can get you up to, what was it, 10? Five years, I think. 10. I think the maximum was 10. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people that were, a lot of people in Ottawa that occupied Ottawa were had various mischief charges. Correct. Tamara Litch being one of them, along with Rat King. I think James Bowder is, is, has a mischief charge. I mean, these, mm-hmm. these folks are going to be doing Hillier time. as well, I believe, had Yeah, Randy charges. Hillier, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, who was the uh, M- MPP, a M- member of provincial parliament here in the province of Ontario, out supporting seditionists. Uh-huh. Yeah. Talk about cutting off your own nose to spite your face. Like, <laughs> I just don't understand people sometimes. Most of the time lately, I don't understand people because they just keep doing things that are, 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 un- I don't get it, you know. I just I, I- I listen, my friend, I am right with you. I am right with you. I do not understand. <laughs> you know, I, I get you can, you know, we, you feel an emotion. You want to, you want to react upon it. Sure. I get that. But maybe, maybe sit and think a little while in some things like you had lots of time, you know, it wasn't to spur the moment. My, my, my moment in, in the, I don't know, spotlight. I don't know what you want to call it. That was absolutely spur of the moment. Mm-hmm. And again, uh, I, I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. 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 I agree. Um, speaking about more bad people who were getting uh, their comeuppance in the United States, um, there was a big trial going on that lasted about four months and it was the trial of uh, the Proud Boys. Now, if you remember, uh, not too long ago, there was a similar trial, a uh, January 6th trial for the Oath Keepers, in which a good number of them had been found guilty of seditious conspiracy. Now, seditious conspiracy is an old Civil War era law on the books in the United States um, that hadn't been successfully charged in many, many, many many years, maybe even decades, um, before these cases came along. And uh, with the Oath Keepers, they got some guilty convictions. Well, the Proud Boys case uh, was on trial for close to four months, and um, jurors didn't have to deliberate all that long. They came back to the judge at one point and asked for some clarifications on seditious conspiracy, which was leading people to think that the jury might be deadlocked. Uh, But within 48 hours of uh, requesting that additional information from the judge, uh, they came down with their verdict. 
And according to the BBC, five members of the far-right Proud Boys, including former leader Enrique Tarrio, faced decades in prison after being found guilty, 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 guilty for the roles in the January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. Four of the five were convicted of seditious conspiracy, and all five were found guilty of obstructing official proceedings alongside other felonies. The most serious charges carry penalties of up to 20 years in prison. More than 100 members of the far-right all-male group joined the Capitol riot. All five defendants were found guilty of conspiracy to prevent officials from discharging their duties, impeding officers during civil disorder, and destruction of offense protecting the Capitol. A mistrial was declared on a total of 10 charges against the men where the jury failed to come to a conclusion, after a complex trial that took nearly four months, more than twice as long as planned. And the interesting thing about uh, the mistrial charges is that uh, those charges... Uh, can be filed again for another trial. So uh, they're now at a point or where among uh, the Proud Boys that have been convicted, and uh, so for the charges that are mistrials, where uh, prosecutors could go up to them and say, um, if you are now willing to give us some information, that you weren't willing to give us before now that you're guilty, we might see what we can do uh, with either sentencing or maybe decide not to retry this mistrial case. What do you say, guys? Hmm? Now, almost all of them said in their testimony that they were there because their commander-in-chief told them that they needed to be there and that it would be wild. And that some of them feel that they were duped by their commander-in-chief. Hmm, I wonder how Tiny D. Donny would react to his stand back and stand by people selling him out in court. Oh, I think it goes something like this. Comes the consequence, 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 consequences of my actions chasing me right now. I don't want no consequence, consequence, consequence. I don't want no consequences chasing me right now. Someone take this consequence, consequence, consequence. Someone take this consequence and chasing me right now. Jesus is the consequence, consequence, consequence. Jesus is the consequence chasing me right now. Ah! <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I've seen enough horror movies to know that when a guy is chasing you wearing a husky mask, husky mask you better run faster than that. It will be run faster and longer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that the guy wearing the hockey mask, his hockey mask probably has some type of supernatural powers. <laughs> well, we have to correct. We have to correct your terminology there, sir. It's not a hockey mask. Hockey mask. It's a mask. goalie mask. Goalie mask. Yes. Americans refer to it as a hockey mask. We're Canadians. It's a goalie mask. It's a goalie mask. Traditional goalie mask. <laughs> Traditional goalie mask. Yes. A Jacques Plante special. Well, you go. <laughs> Linda M. And don't go into the basement. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Maybe we should just, split up. <laughs> I just watched Scream 6 the other day. Um, um, is that the uh, newest one? Yeah, this is the newest one. With the lovely <laughs> and talented Jenna Ortega. She's just great in everything She's she does. Great. Yep. She is Wednesday Adams, by the way. She owns yes. that character completely. Um, and, and I love how in the new Wednesday Adams uh, television series on Netflix uh, that um, Christina Ricci, who played Wednesday in the early 90s, mm -hmm. they asked her for her input. She goes, I have no input. That's her, that's her Wednesday. She did an incredible job of it. I did yep. what I did. She does what she does. Like, you know, what? she's on the show. Yeah, she's on the show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Christina Ricci is on the show as a different character, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so that was too. great. So look, um, I broke my glasses. Look. Oh no. Yeah. Oh wow. I ordered a new pair. They should be in in a couple of days. And and somebody says, "Well, you were going to order a new pair anyway." Yes, but I still wanted to keep the. <laughs> I ordered a new pair for my new script, so it should should be here in about a week or so. But these are. He's on their face for almost ten years. So you know. Wow. Okay. Okay. That um, the money's worth. Mm, yep. Now, uh, Henry Enrique Tario uh, was convicted of seditious conspiracy, even though he was not in Washington that day. What did he do? Was he was he a bad bad boy? 
I, I think he just sort of coordinated everything and then just decided to stay back. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I, I, I forgot. No, no, that, that's not exactly what happened. No, he wasn't that bright. He was arrested two days before for previously burning a Black Lives Matter banner and weapons charges. He was ordered by a judge to leave the city and ended up watching events from a hotel room nearby Baltimore. So the moment he had waited for all his life, he was removed from before it happened, and he's still going to jail for maybe up to 20 years for it. Way to go, Enrique. And Enrique, hmm, really weird name for a guy that's in charge of a white supremacist group. Hmm. Just saying, just saying. Tario's co-defendants, Ethan Nordian, uh, who went by the alias Rufio Panman, uh, was also convicted with co-defendant Joe Biggs, 38, of Florida, a U.S. Army veteran and former broadcaster for Alex Jones's InfoWars. Oh, the fact that he's a former U.S. Army veteran, I'm sure will reflect very well on him come sentencing. Because he should know better. Uh, Zachary Rell, 36, a former U.S. Marine. Oh, well, there you go. Huh, gee. And leader of the Philadelphia branch of the Proud Boys. Fifth defendant, 44-year-old Dominic Pozzola was found not guilty of seditious conspiracy, but was found guilty of everything else. And he, too, is a former U.S. Marine. And at the time, a relatively recent recruit to the group. He's the guy that took the riot shield from the police officer and smashed the window. He was one of the first people inside the building and lit a cigar in celebration. He was the new guy, so he wanted to be first in to, you know, to make sure to prove his cred. He did a bad, bad thing. Mm. Mm. And he must, and he must punish, punish. <laughs> He's been a very, very, very bad little boy. You get a spanking for that. <laughs> so, yeah, they are going to jail. They're going to jail. They're going to jail. They're going to jail. And I like that every single one of them is pointing to Donald Trump and saying he told us to do it. And I love that every single one of them is saying, the, you know, he said it would be wild. And and every one of them is saying, well, he said he was going to march down with us. <laughs> he said he was going to march there with us. Sure. So and we went. Kind of yeah. like he was going to drain the swamp. He is the swamp. He's the swamp monster. So, yeah. So, um, none of this, none of all these little convictions and the testimony that is being used is actually very good <laughs> for Donald's future prospects. Oh, oh, darn. Poor, poor Donnie. Poor, poor Donnie. And one of the reasons I do say poor, poor Donnie is that... Um, well, his friends from uh, the Lincoln Project, mm. hmm. they came up with this thing about a month ago, uh, and I've been trying to find a pretext to bring it in. And I think today would be a good time, Mr. Grizzly, to do it, if you would. So I, I love really, really good political ads. Oh, yeah. This one's very good. Referring to Trump, Carlson says, I hate him passionately. I hate him passionately. We are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. So there it is, Donald, the truth. All your friends at Fox hated you from the start and hate you even more now. Rupert cut you off. He picked Tiny D DeSantis. Sean and Laura won't have you on. Even Tucker admitted it. He hates you. <laughs> passionately. You could handle that, but Fox wants to make you disappear. Switch off the spotlight. Tucker couldn't wait to ignore you most nights. And Rupert, he promised to make you disappear. After all the money you made him, and as the walls are closing in on you, they've hung you out to dry. So what are you going to do, Donald? For once, we'll help you. You may not like us. The Losers Project. But you know we always tell the truth. Fox deserves to be punished. You're strongest on Twitter. Go back there. Tell your people to drop Fox. It's the only way, Donald. The only way. I love them. Oh, that's, that her that's, voice. That's, like this, like the paranoid voice in his head. Yeah. It's the only way, Donald. They're closing in on you. Even your kids don't like you anymore, Donald. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love the link 
fucking project. <sighs> I wish you know, the liberals could borrow a bit of that edge every now and then. <laughs> yeah. It, it, well, I think the, the difference being in is they don't, they don't want to go down that road because look what happens every time jug meat does something, tries to do something similar and any, you know, he, he pulls, he plays that card uh, and he's like, Justin Trudeau. I'm like, dude, you're in a confidence and supply agreement with the yeah. man. Maybe he's not do that. No. Yeah. That's inconsistent. Yeah. It's inconsistent. Shows a lack of, of backbone of character of leadership. And I expected <laughs> it more from Jugmeat. I expected a great deal more from, from him. So when he pulls stuff like that, it, it just makes me, ah, dude, you know, you scored a point the other day and now you just own gold yourself again. Again. Like, stop. You don't need to do it. You know why you don't need to do it? One, it's shooting yourself in the foot. But two, we're already painfully aware of what's taking place. So why are you trying to fight the guy that you're supposed to be working with? Fight the guy who keeps trying to drive us further and further apart. The rage farming Russian, Russian asset who apparently apparently is deep in the closet, which I don't care about that. I, that, I don't give a shit about that. I don't, I don't care about I, deep in the closet, but when you use your refuge from deep in the closet to start doing things to attack your own kind, like allowing a guy like Garnet Genuist to sit still on those benches. That's where I have, that's a, problem. I have a problem with you. Yes, Exactly. Exactly. It's look, I don't have a problem with the closet. To, that's your personal choice. You want to, you want to wear a beard, uh, which would be the wife, right? You want to have, you want to do that. That's fine. Want a white wedding? Go ahead. That's fine. Totally fine with all of that. But it's when you lash out at basically your own group, when you allow Garnet Genuist to sit at a man who that aren't uh, that Aaron O'Toole sent out of the country so they wouldn't have his dissenting vote against banning conversion therapy. And not only sent out of the country, but sent out of the country with supervision. Yes. Yeah. And PZUF went with him. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure. And they made sure he was several time zones and an ocean away so he couldn't get back in time. Exactly. All right. Because it was the right thing to do. It's, it's like, right why thing. is Genua still sitting? But that was O'Toole well, who did that. Oh, yeah. It was O'Toole who did that. Well, it wasn't Sleepy. I think there is, I think, look, and I had a lot of issues with O'Toole and I, and I, you know what, honestly, uh, the more I do research, research, more I read about this man, I think that he was not going with his own gut and was listening to his comms people too often. Yes. Uh, and, and a leader should have comms people as advisors, but they shouldn't be telling you to do everything. You should still go with your gut on a lot of things. And I think he made a, a ton of mistakes and it cost him. Well, you know what? They were going to oust him anyway, because you've got too many extreme reformers in that party right now. So he, he was never going to last ever because yeah. yeah. he wouldn't tow their party line. He, and he said he wanted to try and bring people together. So I still have a million issues with the man, especially what he did to veterans when he is a veteran you know, but I think that at his core, he's a somewhat decent human being mm -hmm. has some redeeming qualities there. Mm -hmm. Skippy doesn't have a single one, mm -mm. none, not, a, there's not a single redeeming quality about the man. If you can find one, I'd be happy to, to share it with people. I would as much as I hate the man. And, and I, and I would preface, look, I hate the guy, but he was right on this count. I've not seen him be right on anything. But he, he has, correct me if I'm wrong, but has he not come out in, in defense of a woman's right to make a healthcare choice? I, I he, could says, yes, he says, he says it is. Yes. But he would also let his, his cabinet vote on it. Yes. So again, so, I, I keep on saying, that's the, keep on, the thing I keep on saying, right? So I'm, I'm against racism. Okay, you're sitting and having a conversation with me, and another friend comes along and then calls me the N word. Yeah, you just let that happen. You didn't do anything. You didn't call them out. You didn't kick them out. You didn't ask them to leave. You did nothing. Well, I can't. He's my friend. Well, then no. you're not against racism. <laughs> you support. You passively support him. But hey, I'm your friend too. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't very friendly. <laughs> you not having my back. <laughs> and 
technically you weren't being a good friend or your friend who said a racist thing too, because you know, when your friends are sporting a bad look, uh, you should let them know. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's just like you tell, <laughs> you, 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 you put a your friend will tell you, them. you put your arm around them or you embrace them in some way, shape or form and say, look, that was really bad. What you just did really har- harmful and hurtful to a lot of people. And you know what? Sometimes somebody will do or say something that is really insensitive and harmful and hurtful to a group of people and not even realize that they're doing it because it's always been that way. And nobody's ever told them what you're doing is wrong. Guilty. I've been guilty of it too. When somebody pointed at Paul, that's, you know, this is why we don't do that. I went, well, I had no idea. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, when you know better, you do better. It's real simple. I, I'm no saint. God knows that. Uh, I'd be dead if I was a saint because you can't be alive and be a saint. I'd have been smited. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what it boils down to is this. It's like when somebody does something bad, if you are their friend, tell them what you did was bad. You, you, you can't, you can't let it go. And you don't have to do a, you know, it depends on your relationship with the person, of course, and you make the judgment call and that there's nuance to everything, but you need to remember, you don't necessarily have to call them out in the public square and embarrass them. Sometimes that's required, you know, but if you're, if you're a good close friend, you might be able to just pull them aside and say, you shouldn't have done that. And here's why, you know, years ago, um, uh, like I have, I have my pronouns in my bio and years ago, I'm like, I don't get it. Why the hell would I do that? And then when a friend explained to me, this is why I went, Oh, okay. Well, it costs me nothing to do this. Let me just put them in there. I didn't know that was the reasoning behind it. I thought, what is this? Some sort of virtue signaling? No, it's not. It's to let, uh, trans folks, uh, people who, uh, are, 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 are transitioning or, or, thinking about transitioning or, or, or on a spectrum, if you will, that, Hey, you're cool with me. I'll respect who you are. You're going through some stuff. I'm cool with it. I'll, I'll support you because we need to support one another in times like that. One of my colleagues, a former coworker who I'm still in touch with, um, came out as a trans woman after like 35 years, been married mm-hmm. 15, still married has children, full transition, by the way, top and bottom surgery. Mm -hmm. And she is living her best life. Right. Legitimately living her best. And this was a person that you would never have thought, well, that that there's, you know, that that person's definite. No, there was no hinting of it at all. Really? Oh, this, this was a, like a sort of a hyper-masculine shaved head, kind of always had a scowl on, always angry looking like it. Mm. But I did, and every time we worked together, we got along great. And this was one of the hardest workers I ever worked with. But, but what this, this person was always very quiet and inward and never spoke. As a matter of fact, a colleague, uh, they had to go down to Toronto to do a job. So they drove all the way to Toronto, never said a word the entire trip. Wow. Not a word for four plus hours. I, I think the wow. only time they spoke was um, pulling over for coffee and a toilet break. Are you okay? Yeah, okay. Well, it was because this person was suffering the whole time. Was not, you know, I can't begin to imagine what it would be like to feel like you're born in the wrong body. I cannot begin to imagine that. And I, and we've talked about it. And I'm like, I, I'm just so happy for you that you are, you're now living who you're meant to be. And, and she has said time and time again, I was always this way. I just kept it hidden from everybody. And now that I'm, you know, very open and public about it, I can, I found my happiness. And this person is genuinely happy, I think, probably for the first time in their, in their life. Yeah. So, you know, go bringing it back to when, when my friend, uh, um, uh, oh, I'm, I can see the spelling of his name, but I can't think. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Malika, Malika. Anyway, it's an M name. I can't remember exactly right now. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Mikhail, Mikhail. There we go. Mikhail pointed out to me, and I said, "Why do you have like what's with the pronouns in the bio?" This is about ten, ten years ago, eight or ten years ago, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what it was all about. When he explained it to me, I went, "Okay, it's it's to let people know you have a safe space. You're safe with me. 
I accept you for who you are. And that's why when people go, oh, pro bio pronoun boy, I'm like, they frighten you, don't they? My, bio, my, my pronouns and my biography frighten you. They do. Mm -hmm. Because I'm comfortable enough to put them there to let other people know that, you know, you're safe here with me, but they frighten you. Why is that? Why are you afraid of my, my pronouns? Is it because you're harboring a deep, dark secret about yourself? I go, hey, you know, you're the one who's afraid of my pronouns, not me. Right. Right. I'm not afraid. I just think you're being, uh, you're virtue signaling. No, that's not what I'm doing. And again, why, why, I don't understand why people have an issue with virtue signaling. Neither I. Because usually the message is good. I hate virtual signaling. So you prefer people to be raging a-holes? Is that it? Like, you know, <laughs> it, it, well, and, and Linda, your, your statement here, visibility matters. It, um, it, Paul, Paul, uh, uh, Opa, uh, not Opa, Upa, Uma? Upa, Upa. Uma is my, uh, yeah. Yes, it, thank it, you. Uh, from, from Kim's Convenience, Paul. Yes. Uh, young Young Sung Lee, is it? I can never get it right. Anyway, his speech about how representation matters and, and how seeing your representation on the screen helps to get people to talk. And when you talk, you communicate. And when you communicate, we can find a common ground. Look, most people on earth are not that far apart on most things. And I mean that genuinely. There's, mm -hmm. there's some who are extreme views, of course, but I said most people on earth are not that far apart. At the end of the day, we want our, our partners, our spouses, our lovers, our family members, the people that we love and care about to be happy and have a, a good life and, you know, shelter and food. And we all basically want the same things. Mm -hmm. We're not that far apart. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But you have agents of chaos that want to drive a wedge between us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do they do? They thrive on the chaos. They thrive on the rage because what does rage farming get you? Filthy lucre, my friends. Yes, indeed. Uh, the actor you're speaking of is Paul Sun Kyung Lee. Thank you. And uh, speaking of his Kim Kinsman convenience, Jean Yoon, um, who we've asked a couple of times to be on the show, but she's very, 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 very busy, uh, just celebrated a 61st birthday. So happy birthday, Uma. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You uh, sexy, sexy 61 year old. <laughs> You're just flirting with all the ladies. You're just flirting with all the ladies. Can't help it. It's in my nature. It's who I am. <laughs> you are a flirtatious bear. <laughs> oh, this, man. Amanda, lifting up others does not mean that the privilege go down. It just puts us all on a more equal footing. That threatens privileged people because they're afraid to lose that status. And that is exactly it, Linda. That's exactly it. And, and, and you know, I, I think you quoted once before, it's not a teeter-totter. <laughs> you know? It's a rising tide that lifts all boats. Equity, equality. What a great world we would live in if we had all that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree there. I agree. Um, more news. Mm. The Liberal Party convention. Oh, yeah. Has started. And, and um, the conservatives were losing their minds because uh, the guest, the invited guest at this uh, convention, they invited international guest. Mm -hmm. at this convention because they're invited national guests, of course. But the international guest is none other than her royal, no, her royal Clinton, this is not H, just HRC, <laughs> uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yes. Now, conservatives are losing their minds. Of course they are. And of course they're talking about like, you know, American political influence and Right, or talk about um, importing American influence and Americanizing our politics. How dare they bring Hillary Rodham Clinton to Canada to talk to us? Can I can I introduce the pot to the kettle? <laughs> Jesus! I mean, like, really? The, the kettle, the cauldron, the teacup. The <laughs> Doug Ford is saying, "I'm a big time Republican, leader of the progressive, the progressive conservative party of Ontario." <sighs> 
Daniel Thanks. Smith talking about Ron DeSantis and wanting to have safe zones. Come on, people. Kenny, Kenny's probably somewhere still trying to make Keystone happen. Jason, oh. stop trying to make Keystone happen. It will never happen. She, she doesn't <laughs> love you, Jason. He's just not that into you. At all. <laughs> the pot and kettle convention. Um, but... Uh, there was a moment yesterday of uh, the prime minister um, doing what he does best and again signaling that um, he's not uh, afraid to take on a fight with um, Prince Pipsqueak of Fuckwad. Um, Mr. Grizzly, if you would uh, put this up. Uh, I like this. And now, of course, he is playing to a crowd of well, he's playing to a biased crowd. Of course, <laughs> the yeah, supposed yeah. to be inflammable to him. Yeah. So, but right. still, still. We're making sure that everyone benefits. And companies, but also leaders on the world stage, are noticing. When Prime Minister Kishida of Japan visited Canada, he said that he looks to what we're doing to build an economy that leaves no one behind. When we hosted Chancellor Schultz of Germany, he talked at length about our values of compassion and diversity. They know that we have the democratic values that make us reliable. We have great resources and even greater workers. But what ties this all together, what makes Canada really valuable, is we treat people with the respect and dignity they deserve. We care about equality. We care about reconciliation. We care about justice. It has never been more clear that everything is interwoven. But again, conservative politicians just don't get that. They don't connect the dots. They either say investing in Canadians is a waste of money, or that our policies are too woke. Too woke? Hey, Pierre Polyev. It's time for you to wake up. <laughs> and That's he did the Pierre Oliver thing, looked right into the camera and used his finger and pointed at him. That, 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 that was a beautiful thing. That was a beautiful thing. Now, he did something the other day. I don't know if anybody saw it. I'm going to post the link in the chat to his speech uh, on the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City. He did something I've never heard uh, uh, the leader of a nation ever do before. He said something and did something that I've never, ever seen this take place before. And I'm going to play a couple of minutes of this because the speech is, okay. it's, uh, it's important. So, but it's, it's the acknowledgement of the current situation that I think is very important. And just, just have a listen to, just the first couple of minutes of this, okay? The link okay. is in the chat. Please have a look at it. But here, here, here it is. Here's his speech in New York it City. It's great to be back in New York. This is a place where the world comes together, comes to connect. And the council is a great institution for that very reason. Last month, Canada welcomed President Biden to our parliament. The president is a great guy. He's not only a strong partner of Canada, he's an enduring friend. Before he started his address, I remembered how President Reagan, over three decades ago, called the U.S.-Canada border a meeting place rather than a dividing line. And I pointed out that today our border is no longer just a place where we meet each other. It's a place where we will meet the moment. And this is a moment of uncertainty like we haven't seen in our lifetimes. We're three years into a global pandemic. The rising cost of living is putting real stress on families. Despite job growth and wage growth, there's a lot of economic anxiety. Climate change is having a real and 
terrifying impact on people's lives. War has returned to Europe and authoritarianism is on the rise. Antagonistic states around the world are using our economic interdependence for their own geopolitical advantage. And all around us, we see more and more polarization. Every day, it seems like new threats arise that threaten to weaken democracy. So let's talk about meeting this moment. What Canada can be for the US and what we can be together for the world. But before I do that, let me talk about where we've been and how we got to this particular moment. And this is where it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's all think back to that time of Reagan and the optimism we all had about the inevitable triumph of our way of life. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, we were sure that market-based democracy was triumphant and it was going to take hold all around the world. Political elites devoted themselves to trade liberalization and deregulation, to lowering taxes for corporations, because the economy would grow faster and everyone would get richer. Well, the former certainly happened. The latter, not so much. Jobs that went offshore weren't being replaced, and the wages that supported entire communities stagnated. When 2008 happened, banks got bailouts and families got foreclosures. People at home were getting left behind. The middle class was getting hollowed out. And at the same time, we had that promise of globalization that the rising tide would encircle the globe and lift all boats. Well, let's be honest with ourselves that we weren't being straight with ourselves about that either. We talked up the superiority of our system but turned a blind eye to the authoritarianism, worker exploitation and environmental degradation on the other side of the world and that our prosperity relied on. I have never, ever in my life seen the leader of a nation speak those words. Wow. It, it goes, it's, a, it's almost 17 minutes, 16 minutes and 43 seconds. I did put the link in the chat. I recommend everybody go and have a look and listen. I, I don't go into any of the comments on it because you will just hate humanity after five minutes of reading the comments. Um, but I've never heard a, posi a person in that position of authority and power speak those words before. He's acknowledging facts acknowledging truth, acknowledging that the system that we've been living under for the last 43 plus years has failed most people. <sighs> that was shocking. It's a revelatory speech and it's not getting the recognition it deserves. Now, the argument has been put forth. Well, he doesn't believe any of that. He's just saying the speech and he's really good at delivering it because he was a drama teacher. Okay. Okay. Let's unpack that for a second. He taught drama for one semester. He was a mathematics teacher and a literature teacher, okay? One semester of drama, uh, of drama, and all of a sudden he's a drama teacher. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he believes it, I don't know. But speaking the words, that that gives it a, a, a power and a credence that you I've never, to, it, it makes it real. You have to remember that on, in, on the international scene, he is the dean. That's right of the progressive or democratic, or I don't know what you would call it, but let's say left-leading progressive, liberal democracies. Oh. And, and Dean, Dean Savage here in the comments has uh, a great thing. I'm put, posting an excellent speech, but without, but without action and policy, it's just that a nice speech. You are correcting. But no there has question. been action and policy. There are action and policy. And, the, and, and it will continue to move forth because, Look, whether or not he's in touch with the common man, I don't expect him to be in touch with the common man. But unlike Skippy, who likes to talk about, you know, the common man, this man actually did work. He worked as a bouncer, a snowboard instructor, a teacher. He also he doesn't work. make he also doesn't make a big point of trying to present himself as a common man. No. He always acknowledges where he's come His from. Privilege. 
always. The reason for which he's the MP for Papineau, Mm -hmm. which is one of the most economically depressed urban writings in all of Canada. Right. Was specifically for that reason. To make because it he personally has privilege like this, and he wanted to go to a writing where, you know, he had to meet and deal with people that had real everyday on the ground issues so that he would be in touch. What was it Bob Ray said when he first got elected leader and, and became the prime minister shortly thereafter, a couple of years later? He says, I don't know that he has the IQ, but he certainly has the EQ. And today, uh, in a position of power and authority like that, the EQ is vastly more important. Mm-hmm. Because if you have the right EQ, you can surround yourself with the people who have the, the, the higher IQ to help you get things done. And you have the soft skills to bring them on board to be, want to be associated with you in the first place because you have EQ. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> quotient for those who are questioning what that meant. Um, a, a, a humanity personality. I, I've met a lot of super hyper intelligent individuals, uh, some who work as nuclear physicists and brilliantly intelligent individuals, but um, borderline Aspergers. They they don't know how to hold a conversation. They have no social skills. No. And and that's just you know uh, by virtue of the fact that they're probably spectrum, if you will, on the spectrum. Um, and that and that's fine. Uh, that's fine put them in the positions where they can benefit um, humanity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you need a leader that is in touch with emotions. You know, people shit all over the man when he was openly weeping about the gourd of death, uh, death of Gord Downey. I'm like, well, they were friends. Of course he's going to be upset. Why wouldn't he be? He's a real human being with feelings. Do I see eye to eye with him on everything? No, I don't. I don't. And I have issues with the man. But I'm going to have any issues with every politician at some point in time. Because nobody is ever going to see 100% eye to eye with each other at all times. It's just not possible. It's not possible. Human nuance prevents it from, from happening. But that speech, that, that, that is a shot across the bow. That's a shot across the bow. And that- where did he say it? He's, in he's framing the campaign. He's framing the next election right there. He at is. the World Economic Forum, at the WEF. Well, no, that was the Council on Foreign Relations. Oh, sorry, Council on Foreign Relations, sorry. Yeah. It's in New York City, you right, know, the, the, the heart of capitalism. Yep. The beating heart of capitalism. He yeah. just shot across the bow. Hey, I'm here. Pay attention. This shit, the status quo, can't be anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I believe that the next U.S. election is scheduled for before the next Canadian one, if yes, we don't yes. go early. No. Um, so if Biden secures a second one, there's four years, four more years of progressive policies coming from the United States. Because Biden, while a lot of progressives in the United States don't find him progressive enough, um, he ended up being way more progressive than anyone <laughs> expected him to be. And our prime minister, for all the people who are complaining and saying, you know, not enough, not good enough, not fast enough, he didn't do enough, he broke promises, he hasn't got the water fully solved yet on First Nations, and it, it's water. It's, the, it's very important. I mean, yes, we roll our eyes. And get, but at the same time as all those things may be true, also is true. That mm-hmm. he is the prime minister that has done more to solve the water on First Nations issue than all previous pri- pr- previous prime ministers combined. Every single one of them. Because, and he's gotten way more than, what, 70% of the way mm-hmm. so far? Oh, it's beyond that, yeah. So, I mean, it's not all done, but the progress done to date is definitely not negligible. And all the First Nations communities who do have their water right now and are being trained to manage their own water treatment systems and have managed to negotiate with the government not only the money for, to have the water system built, but for the ongoing maintenance as well, because that wasn't a thing before. They would just build it and then leave it there. Mm-hmm. Um, these types of things matter. The reduction of child uh, the childhood poverty in the first years, the shoring up of the CPP for a generation, uh, the inclusion of transgender Canadians under the Charter of Rights. Good thing he did it all those years ago, eh? Oh, no because shit. if he tried to do that now. Wow. 
good thing he was pressing it and saw that coming. The legalization of pot, the expand, uh, uh, exp- I don't know the expunging of criminal mm-hmm. records yeah. uh, for nonviolent offenders that had uh, pa- uh, that had pot marijuana records. related, yes, yeah, marijuana reconciliation, uh, car- uh, carbon regulatory pricing, um, just bringing back the census. Uh, mm-hmm. The, which, which, the, by the way, we crashed the, the website because people yes. were so excited. Yes. Child care, dental care. Just, this prime minister, for all the bitching that can happen from the left, saying he hasn't done enough, he hasn't done enough. Um, what did the previous prime minister after 10 years leave us with that was accrual to the nation? <sighs> Tax free savings accounts in the Canadian Human Rights Museum. Yeah, two things. That's about it. And yeah, and, and the TFSA lauded, applauded. It was a very good thing. It was the best savings program ever developed for Canadians. Yeah. Period. Cutting the GST dumb. by two percent was dumb. Just dumb. And I know a lot of people, hey, that I go, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But it was not a good idea. It was dumb. The, I know people, keep on, people keep on saying that there's no such thing as a good tax like this, but the GST actually is a good tax. Brian Mulroney said We're it. Taxing consumption. Like, Brian Mulroney said years ago, uh, history will look back upon me as the man who helped save Canada. And as, my, and as many issues as I had with the man, I cannot argue with that statement. The GST was absolutely necessary. As much as we all hated it. And how necessary was it? Well... John Cretchen ran on a platform of getting rid of it. And then? And then, when John Nunziata asked him why he didn't get rid of it, he kicked Nunziata out of the party. Real democratic there. Because you broke a promise that you said you'd keep. Real democratic there. But he realized, no, this, this is necessary. You know, when you're campaigning, you can say one thing and do another, but I disagree with that. It's like if you're campaigning and, and in your campaign, I'm going to get rid of this tax. Maybe, maybe take a few minutes to discover why it's there and if it's necessary. Yeah. Good. Good. You know what, Jim, this, this, this thing that Jim just put on the screen here, yep. what, that's not it. Nope. Sometimes the comments pop up quickly when I go to, when I go to yeah. post when another one pops up, just as I click it, bump the HST up to 25% and get rid of income tax. I second I, the motion. So do I. And I know a lot of people, even a couple of libertarians who support that idea. And I don't like to spend time talking to libertarians because most of them are dumber than a bag of hammers. But that would make a huge difference. Just do that. They keep on trying to grow the economy. They keep on trying to increase consumer spending. Charge on, charge the tax on the spending. Don't charge the tax on the income. You want more income. Don't tax income. Yeah. <laughs> the difference that could make would be massive. Massive. Will it happen? I don't know. I doubt it. You got 35,000 people in CRA that have a union that protect their jobs. Okay, that's fine. You're now going to be the HSP. Well, that's just it. You know, you're, you still have to file. Like, you and I wouldn't have to file. Hmm. But corporations that we work for would. And that would free up a whole lot of bodies to do investigations on corporate taxation, now, wouldn't it? Well, and actually, we would have to file because we are a corporation. <laughs> Well, we would have to file as a good, yes. Yeah, Individually, yeah. we wouldn't. Individually, we wouldn't. Just think of the headaches that would go away. Like, I still have to file for last year and this year because I'm waiting on a, a T4 from last year. I'm just going to go and file this year and get it done and wait till I get my T4. Because I was like waiting, waiting. No, screw it. I'll just get it done today. Uh, it'll take me 20 minutes. Finished. Over. Done. Goodbye. That's taken care of. And then request my, 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 uh, my form. I have to spend hours on the phone with Service Canada. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm mm. really not. Yeah, I know. Nobody so, looks forward to that. No, because <laughs> you're going to sit there and wait for hours before you speak to somebody. Yep. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you have to arm yourselves with patience and a lovely beverage. <laughs> might need an alcoholic one at that point. Yeah. yeah, although it might not be so bad now because we're now we're now past tax day, so. It might be a little bit better, yeah, yeah that's so true. The, the month and a half leading up to tax day is really rough. Nightmare, a nightmare, yeah. 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 Well, I'll, I'll give them a call today. They're back at work right now, so. 
good, good, good stuff. Um, all right. So we've been through the liberal convention. Um, one of the things about the liberal convention that seems to be rather interesting is that it seems that uh, you know when the conservatives had their convention and then the membership rejected that climate change was a real thing <laughs> that's <laughs> causing uh, O'Toole many problems? It seems the liberal membership isn't doing that. <laughs> uh, so their most quote-unquote controversial proposals are lowering the voting age to 16 and, you know, and, and mandatory voting. Um, so those seem to be the most controversial ones that uh, d- resolutions that will be debated on the floor. Um, now, um, C11 recently passed, and a lot of people are losing their mind saying it's the beginning of censorship. Again, as our position, we keep on saying we don't know enough about it. Uh, we read, I've read uh, the proposed uh, mm. amendments uh, that were in there. I didn't see anything that uh, struck me as being worrisome, uh, but then again, I'm not a legal mind, so I'm not sure how one sometimes connects to another. Oh, and, oh, this opens the door to this. Um, people like Michael Geist, who are respected, are mm-hmm. saying that we need to worry. Again, my personal rule has always been it's the same thing as the CBC thing going on with the PP, right? When he's talking in English but not saying it in French. Um, if the francophone, if if we're talking about free speech and we're talking about content creating, we're talking about uh, on the web and we're talking about first, uh, well, what the, what the United States would call First Amendment rules, but freedom of expression for free speech, that type of stuff. However, people are referring to it in Canada, it is freedom of expression. But if any of that was under threat, my personal rules, I look to what the, the Francophones are saying, particularly in Quebec, particularly the autonomous sovereignists in Quebec, and I look what the Indigenous communities are saying. And if none of them are screaming bloody murder, then I generally say we're good because these are the people, when it comes to culture, uh, who keep their ears to the ground. And if anything was really threatening to all of us as a whole, it would certainly be threatening to them because they are minority voices. Um, I haven't heard anything from either community. In fact, the Quebec community seems to be very much in favor of C11. Um, not, I'm not hearing the Black Quebecois losing its mind. Right? So uh, I don't know, uh, but Michael Geist is uh, highlighting that this one policy proposal might be an issue. I'm guessing maybe this is uh, for blue liberals. People see themselves as blue liberals more than anything else. Uh, but Mr. Grizzly, if you would put it up here. Uh, they have, be it resolved, that the Liberal Party of Canada request the government provide additional public funds to support advertisement-free news and information reporting by Canadian media through an arm's-length nonpartisan mechanism. Be it resolved that can it request the government explore options to hold online information services accountable for the veracity of material published on their platforms and to limit publication only to material whose sources can be traced. And uh, Michael Geis's Liberal Par- Party policy proposal calls for online information services to limit publication only to materials whose sources can be traced. An obvious violation of the freedom of expression was voted as one of the top 20 policy resolutions for party discussion. Um, I don't know if that's an obvious violation of freedom of expression. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't uh, know. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, I've I've perused the bill. I'm gonna. I, I want to spend some more. Like, perused it. I read it, but it's like a lot of it. I'm like, okay, I didn't digest it, so I have to reread it. It's available mm-hmm. online. Um, oh yeah. It, and as I understood it, it's mostly about protecting Canadian content. It won't harm you or I. Mm. It won't stop us from doing what we're doing. It will not uh, stop us from from having our open and uh, our open form of discussion. Now, if we start printing and, and spewing forth lies, misinformation and disinformation, we may be given a warning. There may be a, a asterisk at the end of our program that said some of the opinions expressed in this may not be factually correct, but I did not read anything in there that said they would shut us down. Hmm. So now limiting publication only to material whose sources can be traced. The word here would have to be traced, mm-hmm. clear word. Because if you have an anonymous source, but that source 
if needed to be, could be traced and verified. That doesn't necessarily stop you from using anonymous sources. It just prevents people from saying, many people are saying that. Yes. And reporting that as a fact. Because many people are saying, well, which people? Please be specific. Name some names. Well, you know, people. Right. So it may have more to do with something like that in an actual application. Remember, these things then go to court and judges look at that. So I guess it would mean, it all depend on what the meaning of traced means in this uh, resolution. Uh, But this, uh, of everything that I've seen on the web so far, this is the only thing I've seen stated about uh, some of the policy proposals that have uh, people, and they're the usual suspects on this file, somewhat concerned. Um, so it looks like it's a convention that's going to go rather smoothly uh, and is not going to create uh, a lot of waves for the party. Um, they could use a couple of days of good PR. Uh, <laughs> they've, they've been having a rough go. Uh, fortunately, Pierre Poliver is their best asset, though. And uh, speaking of him, uh, we showed a clip the other day of him in the House of Commons uh, trying to take on Speaker Anthony Rhoda and it not working very well for him. Um, but there's something I've noticed, I've been noticing about him, and I think other people have been noticing it too, that's not very appealing. Um, but he seems to be having a penchant uh, to be breaking the rules of the House of Commons specifically for publicity stunts. Uh, so in recent times, he's brought in books that he's Mm -hmm. read from and used as props, which you're not allowed to do. Not allowed. Uh, He's pointed directly at uh, members on the side opposite, which you're not supposed to do. The -hmm. reason for this, I know this because I was a debater, is back in the days, we used to debate with our swords. Yes. So when we were talking like this, and that's Mm -hmm. why the benches are two sword lengths apart. So, so if you were doing that, you couldn't, you couldn't strike someone. Yes. Uh, and then they remove that. So you can't even have a pen in your hand and do that because the pen is like, oh my God, that's a sword. He's going to attack. <laughs> Based on tradition. <laughs> Not like this. Of course, it's a ballpoint pen. You know, what, a what if he approaches you with a Blackberry? <gasps> or a plum? <laughs> Don't you remember that from Monty Python? <laughs> a Blackberry or a plum. <laughs> Not Blackberry. So, Not a Blackberry, but a Blackberry. Yes. Uh, and he's done things like yell at the prime minister questions when the prime minister wasn't even in the house because the camera doesn't catch the other side or so stand up, stand up and said, you know, ordering the prime minister to stand up and take accountability for stuff. And so, um, um, the, this smarmy, uh, ugly, uh, your father smelt of elderberries and your, <laughs> your mother. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> your father was a hamster and your mother smelled the smelt 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 Or was it yes. the other way around? I can't remember. Yes, I can't remember who your father was. What are the other bit? Yes. <laughs> um, stupid sons of a silly person. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's. Uh, ah, I forgot where I was going. <laughs> I got thrown well, off my Monty Park talk. I need a coffee. Uh, I'm out of coffee. Uh, I totally forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry, kids. If you could well, remind me, I would be. Very, very I did. Great. I did light a candle, though. It's a. It's a scented. Oh, it smells lovely. It's Peck Sniffs Leather and Oak Moss, made in England. Peck Sniffs Number Six, Leather and Oak Moss. Oh well, there you go, Leather and Oak Moss. I purchased that at the Winner's Store. Ah. It was one of those. As you're walking out the door, what did I pay for that? Um, Two ninety nine or a dollar ninety nine or something. It's a lovely fragrant candle. Ah, thank you, Kit Jim. Smell of elderberries. Yes, there you go, Kit Jim. Thank you, PP talking to Trudeau when he wasn't there. So yes, he's pulling stunts in the House of Commons. Uh, (laughs) Yes, Jen, you are very distracting, but you are an incredibly pleasant distraction, dear one. So please, no apologies necessary. Um, So yeah, he's uh, using the House of Commons as a backdrop uh, to pull a whole bunch of stunts, uh, and. People already find question period unwatchable. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what the benefit is of that's going to be. Now, of course, he gets his clips uh, that he that you know 
puts on his Twitter feed and social media and, you know, adds to his fundraising letter campaigns for his outrage du jour, send me money and your data uh, missives. But over the long term, I mean, my sense of Canadians, and maybe this is changing, maybe I'm just old, but my sense of Canadians is that we do deep down have respect for our institutions. And while a lot of us, you know, may muse aloud about abolishing the monarchy or abolishing the CBC or getting rid of this or getting rid of that, when it comes down to really practical terms and doing it for real, um, that's a little different. And seeing someone on a daily basis uh, make a mockery out of question period, which already in the opinion of many has devolved, but seeing someone going out of their way to make question period, uh, to make a mockery out of it in the way that he's doing. Um, I don't think over time that will play well. Maybe right now it's still novel. When people are getting a little, you know, some jollies out of seeing his antics. There's a level of decorum. And there's a level of seriousness that you have to present if you want to be the leader of this nation. Now, Harper, for all the things I did not like about him, and I really don't like him, and his name will forever be thankfully former Prime Minister Harper, registered trademark, um, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, but... Uh, you did not get the sense anywhere that he was a flippant man. No, no. No, no. When it came to the, I mean, he was when it came to the institution. I mean, he, he was held in contempt. <laughs> he was the first leader held in contempt. But his attitude wasn't smart wasn't the smarmy contempt i mean he was just outright contempt he was seething contempt <laughs> but, well, uh, but it wasn't smarmy in this and he wasn't trying to make a joke out of it he was just contemptuous and wouldn't wouldn't participate right at certain times and leave it at that says i'm just not doing it and that's that but he wouldn't stand in there and going look at me not taking it serious <laughs> right that part wasn't there but yeah you're at jim Johnson. yeah you got it jim his attitude was that he was above it or that was an inconvenience. And let's let's lend credence to the fact that when he supported the um, well, it was his message recently about the new Al upcoming Alberta election uh, was was not vote for the UP, UCP or Daniel Smith. No name or party was mentioned. All he says is vote conservative. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Mm, I, you know, yeah. he, he doesn't want the NDP to be in power, but he, I don't think he really wants Daniel Smith to be in power either. At no. Time, right? No. Yeah, he's got some, he doesn't have great choices. And I like a kit, uh, Dean Savage just coming here. Now Harper started this level of discord with his old stock Canadians coming. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he didn't, but I'm just noticing a difference in style. The Bozo eruptions weren't happening that much under Harper because he had that iron foot glove. He did. And he was trying to maintain this type of respect for institutions. That's why he changed the Royal, you know, the Royal Air Force. So he brought back the, he brought back the Royal into Air Force and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Like Chris, he was trying to establish himself as somewhat, uh, he was trying to hold, yeah, trying to hold a brand as mm -hmm. uh, Jim, as uh, Kid Jim says, as, as being an institutionalist, even though he was. He definitely was destroying them in the background. <laughs> An agent of chaos at the same time. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the visual, he knew, he, Harper had enough sense to know that the people screaming, yeah, abortion, woohoo, was not going to help him, even though he was allowing the free votes. Mm -hmm. But he was like, shh, will you just keep it down? <laughs> well, like you said, he was, he's an incrementalist and he understands, like, it's a long game. It's a long game. You don't believe me? It took them 50 years to repeal Roe v. Wade. Yep. 50 years. But they never let up. 
That's the long game, people. Meanwhile, the Democrats were like, la, 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 la. I guess I remember the cartoon, right? It was like two people talking it's like this. So the cartoon is like one person like smacking a person across the face and the other person like that. And it's like, but I really just don't like her. Three support Greek Supreme Court justices. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wake them up. Yeah, but I, I don't know. There's something about her voice. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. <laughs> Which is why we have to focus in Alberta, for example, in the upcoming elections in Manitoba and stuff like that, and in New Brunswick that are coming or that have conservatives. Because if PP wins and becomes prime minister, while there are seven provinces with over 50% of the population run by conservative governments, there goes our freaking constitution. So mm-hmm. we got to flip a couple of these provinces. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, policy. and this comment here from Dean Samage, uh, Harper, Polliver, and Smith are the same. The main difference is Harper was smart enough to conduct his business behind closed doors, whereas Smith and, and PP say the quiet part out loud. There you and go. The difference being Harper didn't like the spotlight. Yes. Smith and PP are, are both narcissists and yes, love PP's, the spotlight. PP has never met a camera he won't preen for and... Smith has never met a microphone that her mouth won't talk into. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Well, as they keep on saying, politics, show business for ugly people. Yep. Especially ugly on the inside. Well, why do you think we have jobs? We're not ugly on the inside, but you know. Yeah. Well, you you don't get that far in acting and entertainment when you're ugly on the inside. I mean, you do sometimes, but... um, Mm. People will totally take you down because they find there's, it, always, yeah. there's always somebody behind the scenes to tell you you're not special. I learned yeah. that one the hard way. <laughs> you need to be taken down a peg every now and then, right? I, I needed to be taken down a peg on one show. On one show, it was closing night and uh, people had come from far away to see me. And it seems that they had to go back the same night. And it was last night and it's teardown night. Mm-hmm. You got to strike the stage, got to put away, make sure the dressing room's clean for the next show and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, it's like, but like they traveled seven hours to come and see me and they got to go back tonight. Like this, and we'd like to go and like have a drink after like, could I not? And it's like, no, no. you're not special. <laughs> you're part of this crew. You're part of this cast. You're part of like this, you know, you've got the stage time. You've got the applause. You've got like three months of dance training and singing and whatnot. Like you helped tear down. Yeah, we're we're not uh, we're we're not. This isn't Broadway, dude. <laughs> Even in Broadway, well, yeah, they might have union stuff like that. Yeah, they do, they do. But you know, but it's like, come on, man. And I was like, but 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 it's like my family, and they came out. This, yeah. Mm-hmm. Check yourself. We have work to do. <laughs> it's like you're with the show till the end of the show, and the end of show is when strike is done. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it's uh, now fortunately, you know. The people who had traveled all this way understood and that they did wait to the extra hour and then everything was fine. But yeah, I, I needed to be, uh, I needed to be a uh, knockdown a peg there that mm. night. I actually thanked the person who did that too. Yeah, it's good. It's, it, you know, we, once in a blue moon, we need to be put in our place. Yeah, cause I could only to- see, I could only see the effort that the people that had come to see me had put in. Yes. Because I didn't want to be that. And it's like, uh, yeah, but you just like spent three months working with these people. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be that guy? Because it's sure that's going to follow you to your next show. Yeah. And let's face it. Once you get a reputation, (laughs) that, that, that shit's like herpes. It sticks with you forever. Yep. Yep. So PP and Danielle would wouldn't be harmed by someone taking them aside and letting them know, um, hey, you may not be as special as you think you are. Mm. It won't happen, though. They're surrounded by yes people. Mm-hmm. That is true. But, you know, I keep on saying, a real friend will tell you. A real friend will tell you. A real friend will have your back when you need to, and a real friend sometimes will stand by you even when you're wrong. <laughs> but they'll Sometimes. also say, "Hey, stop being a dick." Uh, was I being a dick back there? I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to. And it happens because we're only human. We make those mistakes. But real friends will pull you aside and say, "That was a dick move. Shouldn't have done that." I'm like, "What? What did I do? Did I? Was that insensitive? Was I being an asshole back there?" Because you you don't want to be that person, right? But it's easy yeah. enough to to make simple mistakes and. 
we can get an inflated ego very easily. It's not difficult. And I know I had one when I was younger, but as I've uh, aged and gotten older and lost all my hair and losing my vision and my hearing, well, uh, let's just say I've been humbled so many times now that I, I don't know how else to behave, but in only in a humble manner. Um, and that's not a brag. It's just, I'm, I'm humbled daily, <laughs> constantly. Hmm. And the wonderful thing is uh, lately I've been humbled by people who I'm old enough to be their father, hmm. coworkers who, you know, and, and humbled, not because I did something stupid, but humbled because they just taught me something that I was probably expected to know or showing me a way to do something that I, and I'm like, no, I welcome that. I welcome that daily. Because you can learn from everybody if you're willing to learn. Mm. I don't know it all. I'm very good at my job. And I know a lot, but I don't know everything. Somebody's going to come along who knows more than me or knows a better way to do things than I do. And I've learned that throughout my career. And as a result, it's made me better as both a person and at my job. I still have a long way to go to be the person I'd like to be someday. I don't know if I'll ever get there because, look, it is a, it is a never-ending journey. And... You know, you, you do your best to try and be a good human being and contribute to society and not harm others. You're yep. going to hurt people. Yep. You're going you're you to. Yep. you got Kid Jim going, real friends tell you when you've shat your pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's a fresh pair, bud. What? what? You shit yourself. Go change your pants and I'm bathe not, while you're at it. Yes, I'm that friend. I don't sugarcoat. I'm sweet enough. <laughs> I agree with you, Jen. Uh, 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 the tent, I get saucy. I tend to ask my friends whether they think I'm out of line. My bluntness can come across badly. For me, uh, saucy, that's when I'm uh, when I'm sending emails and I'm writing efficiently. Mm -hmm. Because it comes across like I'm curt and really pissed off, Terse, tersely worded. Yeah. And, yes. And, like, yeah. No, I'm just being efficient with my words because I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> well, and, and that's but, where emojis you forget come in. The, yeah, you forget the please and the thank you and the may eyes and you know it's like. I, work on this before then I got thanks, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, well, something that, that strikes me funny. Um, and it, it took me a little while to figure it out. And that's how I realized I had the ADHD after, you know, consulting with my doctor, um, we'd have an email thread and it would be, hello, Paul. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Get the nice easy out of the way, get to the meat and potatoes of it. And I would respond with, I'd go, yeah, no problem. Oh, wait, no, no. I would respond. Hello. And, and, in the way it worked in my brain was, well, none of that is necessary. Let's just get right to the heart of the matter, cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. But, but not everybody responds well to that. Right. Whereas my brain goes, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Like, no, wait, put the niceties in, do the pleasantries. And after you get like 10, 10 or 12 emails deep on the thread, most people start dropping all of that and start yes. getting, and I'm like, good. Now we're on, now we're on an even playing field. We're thinking the same way now, but I, you know, I, I don't, you can respond to a text with yes or no, right? Mm -hmm. But an email you should respond, especially in, in a business environment, you should respond with the niceties, the pleasantries because people do expect it. And, and again, you know, it's I'm social lubricant. It is the social lubricant, but I'm, as far as I'm concerned, all that's, you know, the way my brain works, it's like, well, that's not important to me. What's important is what is your problem? How can I fix it? I'm like, oh yeah, no, let's, let's be super. So over the last 15 years, I've really learned how to, um, come into that in responding to emails in that way. And, and when greeting somebody and I will put emojis in winkies, smileys, thumbs up yep. to let people know, because you're contextually speaking, your, your right. nuance is lost in the, the written, written word loses that. It loses it. You know, yep. you're not going to get, you know, I might respond and the way in my head when I'm writing is, oh, are you okay? Is everything all right? Can I help you out? But it comes across as, are you okay? Is everything all right? Can I help you out? Yeah. That nuance is lost, yeah. which is why uh, emojis really help. That's yeah, the difference between, I'd like to know why you did that. And I'd like to know why you did that. Exactly. <laughs> and yes. if you come, and if you're reading the email coming into it with it's always terse or dark mood, right? Like this, then you're like, "Why the hell is he being bitchy with me?" <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like no, <laughs> he's just being efficient or 
the economic with words. Or <laughs> I, I, and I love that, right? Because right. it's sometimes uh, like I've, I have a few friends where they'll start to tell me a story and I'm, I'm like, look, man, can we, can, can we just get to the bloody point? I, I have to do that with my beaver suite all the time. Every time he wants to tell me about like a little thing in Star Trek that happened, no, no, just like, just like this, I get the whole episode. Yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> and I do that with people and, and I will say to them, look, can we stop right there? What is the problem? I don't need to know any of this other crap. I have a million things on my plate. I have a very busy day. I will help you with your problem, but you need to tell me what it is right now. Don't, I don't need an explanation of how we got here. Tell me mm -hmm. what the problem is. Mm -hmm. I will solve it for you. Afterwards, we can have a discussion about how we got there. But let's fix the problem first. Right. And, and that's, you know, that, that's just how the brain works for me, which is the ADHD thing. It's like, let's hyper-focus on it. And, and, and it's, it's a learning process for me in, in that I have to remember the, the, the social niceties. And look, I'm the friendliest guy in the world, right? I'm a super friendly guy in the pub. It's because I'm not in work mode. I'm in chill mode. Yes. When I'm that's, in work mode, let's be efficient and get it done. That, well, that's the other thing, too. When uh, my sweetie and I, we were dating you know, the first two years and we weren't living in the same city, so it was long distance. So I'd be working and the phone would ring or call and go, Hello? So why do you sound so angry? So, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. Yeah. So, and it's like, I'm not angry. What do you want? So, why you? So, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. I need 30 seconds to switch from work mode to sweetie mode. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But it's like my head is still, I'm still like finishing the last sentence in my head, right? That I'm typing. And it's like, hello? Well, of course, you're going to get a hello. <laughs> you're yeah. going to get short and snappy because my mind is elsewhere. So it, it it took us a couple of couple of well, a couple of years to figure it out that it's like no I'm not annoyed when you call I'm just sometimes I'm, doing something I'm not I'm sitting there waiting for your call. <laughs> oh, what was it I I used to use a thing from a movie I took it and I did it for a little while and then I thought man people are not getting the joke I'd answer the phone and I wouldn't say hello I'd just go thrill me <laughs> and I'd be like what thrill me <laughs> what. Are you okay? What's going on? Never mind. Just hello. How may I help you? <laughs> Make me smile. <laughs> well, one of the things I sign off with on a lot of work emails and a lot of uh, uh, IMs on on Teams and Teams chat is, "Tis a pleasure to be of service with a smiley face," mm -hmm. and I genuinely mean that because it's very satisfying um, to be able to help somebody. Help, mm. help somebody find a solution to whatever it is they may be facing at that moment. It is a pleasure to be of service because I get an enormous sense of, of, of well-being and satisfaction knowing that I was uh, able to provide somebody with a solution or at least find them uh, the path they needed to get to where they had to go. I find that incredibly gratifying. And, and I think that's why I'm probably a, a natural born people pleaser. Mm. We got some comments from the kids here. I lost a few quote unquote friends for calling them out on their comments like you, Saucy, and I'm not afraid to speak up, but sometimes, uh, sometimes I wrote novels and have a lot to say. Some people don't like that about me. <laughs> uh, Miss Hedega, you've wrote novels? You've written novels? We want to know more about that. Please uh, tell us. Um, we have Kit Ellen goes, at least resting bitch face isn't as obvious. <laughs> yeah. Chris goes, goes, Chris goes, I have resting angry face. <laughs> well, I, have, I have the opposite. Like this, I have like resting pleasant face, but like if somebody says something like that, like makes me like, I have that, that dark, like what the, yeah. <laughs> it's just like this, like I go from like nice and pleasant to the, oh, you Oh, it's on. <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that I think a lot of us have noticed over the last few years is that um, the I've always, like, honest to goodness, my whole life, I have always paid attention to people's eyes because the eyes are so very expressive. And I have met women and said, my God, you're, you're so beautiful. Just staring in her eyes. And she said, what? I go, yeah, your, your eyes are so expressive. They just, they carry so much. And one of the things I've noticed is that over the last few years, as we've been wearing masks on and off, frequently or infrequently, the expression we can get with somebody's eyes, well, they may have the mask on and, and, and they're saying, okay, you can tell. Or they're also saying, 
you can see immediately yeah. angry to happiness. The eyes are incredibly expressive, and I've always noticed that since I was uh, a young boy. And as a result, I, I you know, I, I, I tend to look like I'm flirting with a woman when I tell her. So in the current climate, I tend to reserve that because it comes across not necessarily the way it was intended. So I don't even say it, you know, in the workplace, I never say it. I never say it in the workplace. I will comment though. It's like, love the shoes. That's that one you can say Mm -hmm. that one you can say. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, occasionally I'll say it like this, love the shoes. Mm -hmm. Because now they're like, wait a minute, is he gay? Mm -hmm. Girl. So now it's, now it's, it's completely harmless. It's totally innocuous. It's a genuine compliment. Mm -hmm. I, and, and when I make a compliment, I do not have any ulterior motives. I don't. No, I don't. Compliment it's, for it's, compliments and random acts of kindness. It, it's just simply who I am. Um, and yeah, and I'm not going to lie. It has led me to places, but it was never my intent to go there. Mm. Hey, man, if the, if the canoe's going by and they're saying, hey, why don't you just jump on into this canoe ride with me? Why not? <laughs> one there of the is other power things, and kindness. Well, one of the other things I've noticed, too, is because of this long, shaggy beard I've got. Sometimes it's harder to tell my expression because you can't see it as mm-hmm. much. So when I smile, it's my eyes that bring it out. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed I'll be walking along and I'll smile at somebody as they're going by. And they can't really see it on my face, but they can see it in my eyes and they smile back. So it's like, hey, the eye contact thing's still working. Still working. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Indeed. All right. We are getting near the end of the show but because we've been going on for a while now. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we can do that. It's Friday. Friday. It's Friday. Uh, but we have some news. Uh, employment in Canada rose by 41,000 jobs last month with all the gains mm-hmm. made in part-time work. Statistics Canada latest, latest labor force survey released Friday says that the unemployment rate held steady at 5% for the fifth consecutive month, just above the all-time low of 4.9% reached last summer. The job gains in April were led by the wholesale and retail trade industry, while the largest losses occurred in business, building, and other support services. Um, while the labor market remaining with the labor market remaining relatively tight, average hourly wages were up 5.2% on a year over year basis, growing faster than inflation. Yes. Cause it's about time we, uh, recapture some of, uh, the margin lost. The annual inflation rate in March was 4.3% and is expected to fall about to about 3% by mid year. Bank of Canada has been warning that it's a tight labor market and will make it more difficult to get inflation back to its target of 2% as higher wages could put upward pressure on prices. So there you go. Better than uh, maybe not as much uh, full-time work as people had wanted, but 41,000 jobs is more than double the expectation. The expectations were from 12 to 20,000 at the the most uh, optimistic. So there you go. We have that. Um, a couple of uh, little things that I w- wanted to, to mention uh, before we head out. Um, there is uh, the thing uh, a little bit, um, Michael Chung, mm-hmm. uh, who we've been talking about a lot lately. Um, again, I'm having issues uh, yesterday because uh, he went after Melanie Jolie pretty hard not cool, not cool. In, in committee um now i have a small clip but it's not a, a clip of him going after her hard so i'm not sure whether or not it's it's really useful um but you could hear when he was coming after her like she was going like michael michael <laughs> you know and it's like and i agree with you i agree with you that this is <laughs> right uh but he still wanted to have his moment um now again I do not want to diminish the importance of threats to an MP's family Mm -hmm. and to an MP himself, particularly from a nation that is hostile to us. Um, Definitely do not want to denigrate that or diminish that. But this man also was formally sanctioned by the government of China Mm -hmm. in 2021 because he co-sponsored a proposal that would condemn China for the treatment of the Uyghur minority in China. Um, 
I don't think it's that far of a stretch, like I mentioned on a previous show, to assume that if uh, the government of the People's Republic of China decides to sanction you, that it probably means that uh, there's action being taken or interest in your family at the same time. Because it's just how this nation operates. A hostage diplomacy, I mean, we've seen it, right? Um, He's got a hand, but he's overplaying it. He's really overplaying it by trying to make it the prime minister's personal responsibility, trying to make it seem like the prime minister knew that he was personally threatened, but thought so little of him as a conservative and his family that he would let him twist. And that's not what's going on. Um, well, yeah, now, I've got, I've got something to that too. Okay. Please go ahead with it. This is from Evan Scrimshaw. I don't know if you saw this. Our friend Evan who's been on the show, been interviewed. Great, great interview. Great writer. This is a little clipping. Yeah. Uh, let me just pull the graphic down so yeah. it doesn't block anything there. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's where I was going. Okay. On Wednesday, Justin Trudeau said that he only found out about the threats to Michael Chong's family when the Globe published them, the Globe and Mail, published them on their Monday front page. He said it on camera and said that the ceases document referred to in the Globe hadn't been more widely circulated. In the House of Commons today... Uh, that was yesterday, Michael Chong said that the National Security Advisor Jody, Jody Thomas told Chong that the Privy Council Office had received the July 2021 report. It has now come out in the star that Chong confirmed that Thomas told him that neither Trudeau or Katie Telford knew about it at the time, which does alleviate much of the pressure on the Prime Minister for now, but it does make one very important question come back to the surface, which is how the heck do we have a civil service that thinks they can hacking hide this crap from our elected officials. Now, this is important because yesterday when we were talking about this, uh, the word that we had is that the news had not been considered, the threat had not been considered serious, serious enough to be elevated outside the agency. Right. That does not seem to be true. It's just, if Jody Thomas was aware, that does not seem to be true. Yeah, there's there's lots of funny business going on there. Yeah. 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 Lots of funny bits. If this is case, the case, then it adds some color in the texture of the prime minister coming out and saying that all MPs should now be made aware, regardless of how serious CSIS considers the threat. Uh, so there might be a little uh, CYA there, a little bit of covering your ass on the part oh, of yeah. the liberals there. Um, so that news does not make the liberals look good. Uh, Michael Chong uh, overplaying the hand doesn't make the conservatives look good. And as Kit Sasi points out uh, accurately, Mark Burry is suggesting that there's probably an internal war happening within CSIS because as opposed to the previous leaks, which are suspected to come from CSIS officials. Uh, but the only thing we hear is a national national people close to national security are highly involved, which could be not necessarily CSIS because there are several organizations and people associated with the national security. This particular one does appear to be coming from CSIS mm -hmm. specifically. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not quite sure what to make of it all, to be totally honest, Kits. Um, and you know what? On this show, we have no problem with that because one of the things in politics is that everybody wants you to give you everybody wants you to give your hot take right away. And um, you know, sometimes you just don't have enough information to give to give a hot take that would make sense, like we just did yesterday. Our hot take was that the news never went outside the agency, and therefore, what's all the silliness? Well, turns out it did go outside the agency. So it wasn't silliness. So we have to correct our hot take from yesterday because we have new information. Mm -hmm. And when you get new information, you change your opinion. It's as simple as that. That's how science yep. works. So uh, while um, I was thinking that this might be another variation on the previous one where things were not... Uh, not gone up and they were trying to get us to divulge information. This one actually what did go up and there is evidence that it did. So, uh, yes, uh, if you'd read this, Mr. Grizzly. Chong later told reporters, Thomas told him the prime minister had not received the information nor had his chief of staff. 
Chong said he wasn't told why not, nor was he told which government department did, departments did receive it. The decision to call in the ambassador reflects the seriousness of the allegations, Jolie told MPs at the House of Commons Foreign Affairs Committee Thursday. Mm-hmm. And the Canadian government has called in uh, the uh, ambassador of the People's Republic of China for a meeting. Um, now, Beijing is calling the allegations political farce, but mm. you know, it's Beijing, so you got to take it with a salt shaker. Um, the Beijing foreign ministry said China never interferes in Canada's internal affairs and has no interest in doing so. Well, that's a lie because uh, mm. the two Michaels was direct hostage diplomacy. And uh, China... Uh, the Communist Party of China seems to have a penchant for reminding us of how we treat our indigenous people whenever we point out anything about the Uyghurs. So um, they have no problem meddling with their internal affairs <laughs> quite well, uh, the police stations and all that kind of stuff. So, But re- remember, you have to remember that China, everything is safe face, so they never do anything wrong and everything's always done to them. They're always the victim. Of course. Right. Uh, that's for domestic consumption, clearly. Um, now, um, China's ambassador has issued a warning, as China always does, warning to not go further down the wrong and dangerous path of expulsion of an ambassador. So Michael Chong is like sitting there, so like, why haven't you, uh, uh, you know, expelled this diplomat? Like, this who was going to cause some problems with, for our family? Well, one of the major reasons is because. We pretty much expect that if we did that, about within 24 hours, another Canadian citizen would probably be taken hostage, um, which puts us in a weird situation, right? We mm-hmm. we don't expel diplomats for fear of having a Canadian citizen taken uh, taken hostage, which means we're allowing ourselves to be China's bitch in a little bit, right? Or we do take action in order uh, to take action for action's sake, maybe. To make a statement based on the fact that we found out that this happened to Michael Chong's family, and in the process of taking action to save his family, we put another Canadian citizen and their family in danger. And I'm not too sure that if we expel that uh, diplomat, that Michael Chong's family, particularly his family members are still in Hong Kong, are going to be any safer as a result of that action. Mm. So I'm not quite sure what his play here is. I'm not sure other than trying to like keep the story alive to create a little bit more damage for the liberals. Again, if he actually got what he wanted, would he be getting what he wanted? It's a tough one. If we expel that diplomat, does anything get better for his family that's still overseas? Doubtful. Could it get worse? Most likely. Most likely. So I'm not quite sure what the play is here. I don't know. (sighs) Maybe Michael Chong would like to come to a camera and Mike and explain it without using the word Trudeau. Do you think that's even possible, though? Come on. Come on. Just say. Come on. Just say. Just say. Um, Yesterday, being May the 4th, uh, turns out uh, there was an announcement that Carrie Fisher will finally be getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Wait a minute. She didn't have one? I thought the exact same thing. Wow. I had the exact same thoughts of what that hasn't been taken care of already? Like decades ago? Yeah. <laughs> She's freaking Princess Leia. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. But apparently it is how happening. Um, so there you go. Hey. Um, it uh, to, to, uh, A little tidbit of news. Uh, Maxine Richard, who was uh, very briefly for three weeks the interim ethics commissioner mm-hmm. before uh, the conservatives ran her out of town as well. Uh, well, they didn't actually run her out of town. She was supposed to be in the job for six months. It seems that she just went back to her former position as senior general counsel in the ethics commissioner's office. Uh, so she's gone back to being the number two. Um, the House, uh, and she did this after the House of Commons committee that was studying this 
decided to have, uh, launch a study into her interim appoint- appointment. So I says, oh, I don't need this. Uh, so uh, she said, I'm just going to go back to my old job. Uh, so we are now without an ethics commissioner, which makes things really interesting. Well, if something needs to be referred, if somebody needs to take a vacation and run things by, um, I'm not quite sure. And uh, in that, when we were talking about it, uh, we had mentioned, uh, somebody had mentioned that Dominique Leblanc had been sanctioned by the ethics uh, commissioner. And I say, I was saying I didn't really know what uh, that was about. Uh, well, it did happen. It was in the 2018 September. Uh, intergovernmental, uh, intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominic LeBlanc had been found in violation of the federal conflict of interest rules uh, over a lucrative uh, fishing license uh, that had been granted that was uh, linked to a uh, license that was granted to a company that was linked to his wife's cousin. Um, now, of course, it's Atlantic Canada, a relatively small community, lots of people fish, everybody's really pretty much everyone. Not quite sure how you avoid that. Uh, But Mm -hmm. here's the interesting thing is that this was done in 2018 while she was the number two at the ethics office. So the whole claim was that there's no way that she could be objective as an ethical officer because she was related to only one of the 338 MPs in parliament. And even though there already was a conflict of interest screen, but the ethics commissioner had no problem delivering a decision against Dominique Leblanc while she was working there. So what is the problem? I mean, I understand the optics, but what's the problem when we've already shown that it is not an issue because it could be done? Mm. There you go. There you go. There's a uh, Mark Hamill. I don't know who the young woman is. I do not know who the young woman is. Maybe her daughter. Did she have children? I didn't think she had I children. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe his the, daughter? Maybe I his. Know. I don't know. But I don't recognize her, her from the movies unless it was uh, uh, the the young lady who played Ren in the new movies. No, that wasn't her. That wasn't her. It wasn't her. No. So, oh, it's her daughter. Yeah, it is her daughter. There you go. I would assume oh, okay. that my yeah. assumption would have, been, was, would have been a family member. Billy I Lord. Didn't know she had a daughter. Didn't know she had a daughter. <laughs> There you go. Oh, she sprinkled glitter. Oh, mm-hmm. yay. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Um, so yeah, um, he had been found guilty in 2018 uh, by the ethics commissioner in an office in which she had already worked uh, in her job as senior counsel. So um, I don't know why they would have rathered we not have an interim ethics commissioner at all. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Adeka says, Mateo wants me to say hi to everyone. He's beside me right now. He's got another yucky cold in his home again. Oh, Mateo, I'm so sorry that you're not feeling well. But hello and good morning to you. Um, I hope that you feel better really, really, really soon. Right? So you take care of yourself and you make sure that you focus only on getting back to your own self so that you can play with Lego again and watch, uh, um, I believe Nina was her name, uh, playing uh, playing those games there on uh, so that, uh, you know, you can keep uh, mommy and daddy busy making sure that uh, you're doing very important things. Hey, Mateo. How's it right, going, Mateo? brother? Yeah. And you have all the kids and all the cubs here saying hello to you. Kit Jillian is saying hello to you. Kit Dean Savage is saying hello. Kit Elaine is saying, hi, Mateo, feel better. So there you go. Ah, Mistaka says he's totally smiling right now. Ah, we hope to bring a little sunshine to your day, my friend. All right. Feel better soon. <laughs> ah, yes. Good memory, Douglas. Oh, thank you, Ms. Sedeka. I, I, I remember. Well, I mean, like I said, it was very, very important things he was doing. Very, Indeed. very important things. So we have to support that. We have to support that. Um, other uh, little tidbits uh, that I might have for you before we go. Uh, with regard to the CBC thing that uh, Pierre Polievre was trying, it appears that uh, while he was trying to play that well in English Canada, uh, in French Canada, um, in Quebec particular, 
all CPC MPs in Quebec declined all interview requests to speak to the leader's views on the CPC. That's curious. His Quebec caucus was embarrassed by it. You think? They did not want to grant any media interviews. Uh, could it maybe be that there might be some tensions bring within the CPC family? Speaking of chaos, <laughs> chaos spelled with a K, A O S. Hey, if you want to fight, I, that much. Hey, I'm saying that you know, if PB really wants to like start picking winners and losers among his own party, I'm not going to stop him. Um, a little another little tidbit of news also on uh, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. Um, the one hundred forty thousand dollar donation from two Chinese businessmen uh, turns out had been coordinated by Alexandre Trudeau, so they asked him to come in and testify about that, which he did. Um, and it seems, and they also had, uh, also had Morris Rosenberg come in and testify, and the name Morris Rosenberg ring, rings a bell. He was the one that authored the report. Uh, that came out in the early days of the PRC uh, interference uh, news and brouhaha saying that uh, the election had not been interfered with um, itself. Um, and then everybody was saying that, well, he was bought and paid for because he was once the head of the Trudeau Foundation. Now, it seems that uh, when Morsberg was asked if it was typical for Trudeau, Alexandre, not the prime minister, uh, to be uh, coordinating such deals, he said, no, it wasn't, uh, actually. Um, and he said, I imagine I could have... Uh, um, he said that it, it, it wasn't. Uh, but here's the question that really uh, made my ears prick up. He was asked, did the donors request that a Trudeau or Mr. Alexander Trudeau be involved in the ceremony? And Morris uh, Rosenberg said, I don't recall whether they requested it or whether he thought he, Alexander, thought that it was a good initiative on his part. Seems to me that that would be something I would remember. Mm -hmm. The donation came from people making the loan or whether now the reason for which Alexandre Trudeau was uh, involved in this specifically is that uh, the deal was being made originally with the Université de Montréal for a scholarship that would be in the name of the former prime minister and therefore it was maybe a good idea to have Alexandre sign it because for the symbolism mm -hmm. right so it wasn't just money going to the Trudeau Foundation, but it was money going to the Trudeau Foundation, probably for Pierre Trudeau Scholarship at the Université de Montréal specifically. Um, so that's how he got involved. Alexandre Trudeau testified, I imagine I could have given a procuration to Morris to sign for the family, but it was his suggestion for the views of the ceremony and honoring these men, who I, by the way, have no reason to believe their motives were not honorable. And there too, you have a little diversion of thing because Morris Bur Mor uh, Rosenberg said he doesn't recall whether the two businessmen who donated the money requested that a Trudeau be at the ceremony or whether or not it came from Alexandre. And in Alexandre's testimony, it seems that the suggestion for him to be there came from Rosenberg. Mm. 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 So, uh, but it appears that just as was the case for Telford, uh, where when she showed up, because they asked her, and then they didn't prepare pointed questions. And their questions were so embarrassing that members of the intelligence community were embarrassed for the conservatives on the panel. Uh, same thing with Trudeau. They had him there for about two hours. And at uh, the end of the article, uh, talking about it, they said that the inquiry had pretty much petered out near the end. And when he was near at the end, they were starting to ask him questions of whether or not they agreed that the Chinese diplomat that tailed Chong should be expelled, to which Trudeau politely declined to comment. Because <laughs> it's not his... <laughs> this is like not my... So they, they had no questions. There was so nothing there. They had to try and fill the rest of the time with questions about, well, well, what do you think about your brother not expelling that Chinese? <laughs> We're paying for this. We're oh. paying for 
this. <sighs> so, so and, and it seems, and, oh, and here's the other thing. It seems that they want to bring Jenny Byrne to testify in now about Russian influence before. Uh, and even though to take Katie Telford came, uh, uh, J- J- Jenny doesn't want to come. Je- Jenny, who was uh, Pierre Polivier, former question mark flame. They were involved romantically for a bit. And she's still batting for him. Yeah. I'm not saying. I'm just not saying. saying. I'm just asking questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I got that from you, Mr. Grizzly. I find that so very handy. Just ask questions. <laughs> so, um, there's a couple of things that just come across my feed here. I'm going to post two things on the screen in a sec. Um, but there is rumors that the government of Canada is looking at changing the color of the Canadian passport from blue to red. And they're like, what do you feel about that? And I'm like, I think red would be kind of cool, actually. You know, stands out. The Swiss passport's red. Why shouldn't the Canadian one be red? I think that would be cool, number one. Number two, what difference does it make, really? I just, I think it'd be yeah. cool. Somebody somewhere will get bent out of shape. You know that some conservative will make hay out of this for some bloody oh, reason. Oh, well, the, the, they're trying to make make Canadian passports liberal, liberal by putting yeah, red. Yeah. Right. Just like when the, the Ontario conservatives like brought out their new license plates and then they didn't work and then some MP turned Ross's. Well, at least they were better than the liberal license plates we had before. Well, no, objectively, no. they weren't better. And two, we did not have liberal license plates. We had Ontario license plates are white with blue lettering. <laughs> and that way since the 50s, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus, people are stupid some days. <laughs> oh. So speaking of red. I really like the Trudeau sense. It's much better than the Harper senses. <laughs> red, red Dress Day, National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and and girls and two spirit people. Now, I did crop this image because the original image um, tweeted by Merritt Stiles, leader of the Ontario NDP party, had the NDP logo in the bottom left hand corner. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Nope. Yep. Uh, and, and I love Merritt Stiles. I think she's a, a wonderful human being uh, and, and a good leader. And Merritt. I respect what you did, but I do not think you should have put your political um, po- uh, p- political logo on that. Honestly, I, I think it was done in bad taste. It's not about politics. This remember, it's 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 about missing, murdered Indigenous women and girls and Two Spirit people. You should not be sticking your party's logo on it, which is why I cropped it out. And then more news. Uh, this is a sad day. Uh, it's a sad day when New Zealand, Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, France, and Uruguay issue travel warnings to the United States of America because of mass shootings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as um, you've mentioned on the show when I wasn't, uh, when I was absent, uh, we lost uh, Gordon Lightfoot. Um, so uh, when I reported a few weeks ago that he canceled uh, some dates in the U.S., we were hoping it wasn't for some type of major reason, and then we lost him. Uh, so, and uh, the world, way. yeah, and then the the world lost another uh, huge star uh, about a week ago, but uh, Harry Belafonte mm-hmm. as well passed away mm-hmm. at the age of ninety four. Legend was the, the yeah, legend was the the first. Uh, I think it was the first. I'm not sure if he was the first American singer or the first black singer to sell a million copies, uh, but his album Calypso. Uh, he was he was a pioneer, and uh, he didn't just stop at music. Right? He was a friend of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, he did he's done things for the family. He was a civil rights ad, uh, activist, and if you listen to some of his songs, you know um, he's got some of his songs back in the day where he's basically saying like, you know women are smarter. <laughs> you know? So yeah, he he was before his time. Uh, he was, uh, you know, yeah. And, uh, he, 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 he was, un- well, I mean, I can't say universally loved, but I mean, as, as universally loved as you can get as well, an artist. I think I, so, so it was my friend, I mean, uh, Sasha, the same thing, right? Universally loved. My friend Sasha says, Paul, you have a type. And I go, what is it? She goes, you like the black ladies. I'm like, I do. She goes, 
Yeah, you do. I'm like, really? And I think I know where I get it from. My mother loved, loved um, uh, Sidney Poitier mm. and Harry Belafonte. Mm. She thought they were My the too. finest looking men on planet Earth and probably two of the most uh, distinguished gentlemen of character you could ever come across. So I'm like, that's maybe where I get a little bit of it from. My also, mom thought- I have it in my DNA too. Yeah. Well, I think that's why I got it in my DNA too. Cause my mo- mom was all about Harry and mom was all about Sydney. Mom was all about Barry White and Isaac Hayes and the Reverend Al Green. <laughs> the greatest line I think delivered in a film ever was real simple. And it, it, it was the way it was delivered. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Yes. From heat of the night. Yeah, they the call you up there, boy. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> Not boy. Mr. Mr. Tibbs. Yeah. Yeah. Sydney Poitier. How about, yeah. How about uh, Gordon, Gordon Lightfoot, just to give him a, a, a moment. He uh, penned more than 500 songs in his mm-hmm. career. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, um, and he was known as the songwriter, songwriter, songwriter. Dylan loved him. Every, every Dylan body. worshipped him. Oh yeah, without he would Dylan in uh, was there for his inauguration into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. He yep. handed him the the award. Yeah, um, I believe he was the one that was tapped uh, to do the first performance when uh, Massey Hall had reopened. As he, well, he was he was uh, he was the last artist to play before it closed, and the first artist to play when it reopened. He played exactly. it more than seventy times. One hundred and seventy. One hundred and seventy. That's He's made one hundred and seventy appearances. It's got to be a record. More than one hundred and seventy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the president and chief executive officer of Massey Hall, um, Jesse Kumagi Kumagai, said, "The world has lost one of its most profound voices, but his songs will play on, and his soul will always be found at Massey Hall." So, um, apparently, he died of natural causes, mm-hmm. uh, peacefully at home. Um, but yeah, just ugh, songs well, like Summer Side of Love and Early Morning Rain. If you can read my mind. Early Morning Rain is a brilliant song. Big old seven oh, big 707 set to go. And uh, If You Could Read My Mind is a song that's been a hit a number of times. The uh, dance it's version? Been, it's beco- well, it's, become, it's been recorded hundreds of times, but there was the disco version from the, the soundtrack for the film 54 back yeah. in the late 90s. Amber, Jocelyn, Enriquez, and Ultranate. Ultranate, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you could read my mind. A brilliant version. Brilliant that, version of a that song, song. That song, like in my, in my early gayling clubbing days, mm-hmm. that was, they played that song, I think, Every night, probably for oh, about three yeah. years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That one and "You're Free" by Alternate <laughs> as well. Who was on that one? Oh man, did that song play? It was pop. It was just good. It is a <sighs> the remix. The single mm-hmm. was great. The, the remix, remix was killer. Was yeah. Fantastic. I have two copies of it on twelve inch back there somewhere. Oh, love that. You just that that's just a song you can dance you can dance your butt off you can dance your tits off to that and, and you're singing it at the top of your voice while you while you're dancing because everybody knows the song and and they dance like this oh yeah <laughs> the <laughs> arms are in the air for that one Mama. <laughs> doing the song doing the interpretive dancing <laughs> ain't no valley low enough ain't no mountain high enough Keep me from getting to you. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's not cool. I'm, I'm an old white man. I can't be pulling that off. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right at all. Yeah. And uh, speaking, a uh, couple of tiny little uh, tidbits as well. Unfortunately, uh, the people at Budweiser inexplicably mm-hmm. decided to put the VP of marketing and the VP of global marketing on leave as a result of the backlash from the Dylan Mulvaney promotional effort. Mm-hmm. That was a dumb move. Um, yeah. When we talked about uh, that Kenyan cult leader that said, uh, starve to meet Jesus, uh, when we reported it, 48 bodies had been found on his property. That is now climbed to at least 89. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and, it's a star if you're going to meet Jesus. Cause, you know. Yeah. Um, for some reason, um, the Canadian Human Rights Commission uh, has had the Senate have to declare that it will start hearings into incidents of reports of racial discrimination at the Canadian Human Rights Commission. Wow. Which goes along with reports a couple of years ago of discrimination at the Canadian Human Rights Museum. You'd think that the one place where there would not be discrimination, particularly against black people, would be a community would hope, Canadian right. Human Rights Commission. But it seems that they've been passed up for jobs. I'm sorry I'm laughing. Because the irony. It's, it's just so bloody absurd. Come on. Like, re- really? Yes. There. It's it's in the name. It's in the name. But here we go. When we're talking about the Senate, the Senate is uh, it's the Senate's initiative to hold these hearings into this. So again, the Senate is showing that it can have value when it wants to. And our final tidbit, uh, my final tidbit, is that uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has uh, named some of its inductees this year, and among them uh, are Kate Bush probably prompted by uh, running up that hill, becoming number one again as a result of uh, it being included in Stranger Things. Uh, Shaka Khan. Shaka, 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 Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Let me fucking, let me fucking Shaka Khan. Let me fucking, it's all, I love her. <laughs> so so uh, when my mom heard that song on the radio, she was going to call into the radio station and complain that it was, that it was vulgar. I'm like, Ooh. why? Well, didn't you hear what he was saying? I'm like, Shaka Khan. What? That's what they were saying. Shaka Khan. That's the name of the artist. Oh, I thought they were saying suck a condom. I'm like, what? That doesn't even make sense, mother. (laughs) She goes, yeah. And of course, we laugh at it now. (laughs) Misheard lyrics. I'm like, maybe find out what. Well, now, and that being said, at the time, finding out what the lyrics were, were not as simple as today. As today, right. Today, you just hold it up and the lyrics will show up on your phone. Yeah. Couldn't do that 30 years ago. What's your best misheard lyric? Mine is from Dead or Alive's You Spin Me Right Round. I would always, I always hear all, uh, sorry. All I know is that me, you look like you're lots of fun. Open up your loving and watch, I'll ski right down. No, I. <laughs> it's watch me here, I'll come. Watch, watch me here, I come. But for years, I thought it was watch, watch, I'll ski right down. I always thought it was weird, but, you know, he had the hair and they had the flags mm. going on. He had the eye patch. I was like, okay, well. He is a little weird, so okay. Well, he's skiing down for someone's love. I think <laughs> for me, it was probably the one that comes to mind immediately is is uh, from "Loser" by Beck. Oh yeah, there's a line in the song where he says "Yo he so pendedor," which is Spanish, uh, uh, badly pronounced. But his pronunciation, I thought he was saying "Yo open the door, I'm a loser, baby." Which made no sense to me. I thought it was like, so I opened the door. (laughs) What what does that mean? I don't even get it. Yo, yo, so pendador. Oh, Oh, pendador. Yo, so pendador. Okay. And then there's the misunderstanding of lyrics. Could have been the Willie Nelson, could have been the wine. Was not Willie Nelson's music. It was Willie Nelson's herb. It was a way to refer to cannabis in the day before it was legal. (laughs) <laughs> Carpeting the landslide on a champagne supernova in the sky. I suppose. Carpeting the landslide. Jason Waterfalls. <laughs> Don't go, Jason Waterfalls. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne always thought Bad Moon Rising was bathroom on the right. I see a bathroom on the right. On the right. <laughs> why can't i find it where they said it was <laughs> i mean like of all people to be misunderstanding lyrics ozzy he doesn't even speak english <laughs> Sarah! Sarah! you see that commercial just, he played with the playstation and they all move out on him and he's still playing yeah the, the one where he got his new bmw and the bmw responded to voice commands couldn't understand anything he said and it was on the show the osborne's <laughs> And he's like, just tell it where you want to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not understand what you just said. It's like the voice, com- uh, voice command elevator and the two Scotsmen get in. I'm sorry, I could not understand what you just said. Kitting <laughs> going, Jason Waterfall sounds like a niche fetish performer. <laughs> he does wet work. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not that kind of wet work. <laughs> Different kind of wet work. Jason Waterfalls and Amina Golden Showers. <laughs> you want to be offended? Look up Bobby Brown Goes Down by Frank Zappa. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Read the lyrics. You'll be offended. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh and also admitted had <laughs> been admitted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Uh George Michael, Cheryl Crow, and Willie Nelson. Willie. The singer, not the pot. <laughs> really? See what I did there? <laughs> uh, Dean goes, I'm hoping Mateo took a break from watching. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, before we too us too, <laughs> Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? I I believe we do. I, um, okay, because we're uh, we're closing in on the three hours here. We had a little bit of a marathon, uh, but oh, look a- at that. holy crap! I didn't even realize the time. See what happens. I know. It, time it just flies when you're having fun. You know, it did. It really, really did. Uh, because I didn't think we had that much to say. To be totally honest, when I started. Uh. <laughs> So, so uh, a, a quick joke, a quick joke. Um, uh, uh, this this um, gentleman was um, working in uh, an adult entertainment business, a store, a storefront where they sell um, personal items for self-gratification. And the clerk, uh, he was working in the warehouse and the clerk said, could you come out and, and man the counter for a few minutes while I have to run out and get, uh, I have to uh, run a couple errands and then I'm going to grab some lunch and I'll be back. And he says, yeah, sure. No problem. No problem. So the young woman comes in and says, I am just looking to buy my very first, um, item. She goes, uh, but I don't know what to get. Well, we have a selection here. We've got a white one, a black one and a plaid one. What's the plaid one? Well, that's the Scottish one. Why, why is it that's that thing is large why is it like that well you know what they say about the scotsman under the kilt right she goes oh okay i'll take that he goes well it's 179 dollars plus hst okay no problem so he buys it clerk comes back and says uh i was out for lunch i uh, got things done and did we make and he says yeah one uh, one woman came in uh she looked at a white uh, phallus a black phallus and ended up buying uh, your thermos for 180 dollars <laughs> no, 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 no. Because remember, the thermos used to be plaid. There was a day and time. You have to be of a certain age to get the joke. But there was a one one time in Canada, if you bought a thermos, it was plaid. It was clearly marked. It had a yes. tartan symbol of some type yes. on it. Yes. What's the plaid one here? That's the that's the Scottish. You know what they say about the Scots under the kilt. Okay, I'll take that. It's 179 plus tax. Hold your thermos for $180. Ah, yeah, c- c- Christian, go. How can you tell if, if it's a Scot- if he's a Scotman? Look under his kilt and see if it's gruesome. Then look to see if it's gruesome more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's usually a casual Friday th- sort 15 of thing. 15 beaver points, kid Christian. <laughs> 15 <Yeah>. beaver points. <laughs> That's usually something we save for casual Friday, but I thought I'd just slide one in early. Uh, mm, Keyword slide. (laughs) Well, kids, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Podcast. We hope you love listening to you because obviously we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring. (laughs) Christian goes, whoops. (laughs) Word of mouth is priceless. So please let your peeps know about us. Because democracy is something that you do. Uh, yes, yes, Kit Jim, it is Friday Grizz. <laughs> and Douglas coming in hot with a passable Scots accent. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Co- I'm trying to come up with a Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, Italian accent for the play that I'm working on. Forget about it. Forget about it. it it's it, it's not working too good. I tell you, I keep slipping in and out of it. <laughs> well, my problem is every now and then I'll be doing. I'll be trying to do a Scottish accent, and then all of a sudden I become South African, and then I merge into Australia. The Irish one I never mix up. The Irish one's always Irish. No problem there. Hmm. Uh, because democracy is something that you do, uh, if you have a writing implement and a piece of processed tree, um, then you can uh, write 
your MP, your MLA, your senators, your media people, and uh, ask them uh, to make sure that uh, they pay attention to what our politicians are doing on our dime and with our time and uh, telling them that you demand better. Hmm? There you go. Uh, If you really like this podcast, you can find us on all well, on the Cryer Media Network and all Beaver Grizzly plat- friendly platforms, stars and reviews are appreciated. So please, please, please uh, be generous. We love to hear from you. So please reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. And you can, you can subscribe to us via our, our pod page, podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and we'll come straight to you when we have something fresh off the bandwidth and if you are watching us on our true north eager beaver youtube site true north eager beaver media youtube site very important uh well then make like kit elaine and smash that button before you leave and if you haven't subscribed yet please do uh because we're trying to reach a thousand minimum so that we can monetize uh, our site and that would help us a lot we can't do this without you or your kind and generous support so if you feel that we've done a particularly good show and if you're watching you can scan the qr code that i'm sure mr grizzly will make appear in uh, right by his head in that box and if you are listing then you let your fingers do the walking to coffee ko-fi.com for coffee slash eager beaver to make your donation and you would do as kit tavi g did who a couple of days ago sent us a nice little tip. Uh, No particular comment with it, um, just, I guess, a general well done. So uh, thank you, Kit Tavi G. We really appreciate it. Um, And uh, we see that you're here today in the chat, so uh, we get to thank you personally. Thank you for making... And and Tavi sent me, I think I posted earlier, uh, about uh, Michael Chong. So thank you, Tavi, for that. Appreciate it. Yes, as well. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, thank you uh, to everyone uh, who are helping us uh, like this. Uh, we really, really, really appreciate it. And trust us, we will put it to very, very good use. Um, I think that's all I got. So, uh, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there. So, please be kind to and uh, gentle with yourself. And uh, I hope you have wonderful weekends planned. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? I'd like to thank the makers of kale pectate. Ooh. (laughs) And and, uh, and, uh, Bear Corporation for creating Naprox. Let's just say it helped with pain yesterday. Pain and some uncomfortable stomach things. Okay. And we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, Let's just say the, the kale pectate is your friend when you're suffering. Uh, okay. I had to leave the office early yesterday. That's how bad I, I was. Got into the office and I was fine. And then uh, I had a meeting and then I had a, a, an appointment. I took care of some stuff. And then it was like I was going to another part of the building. I stepped on the elevator and one of my coworkers looks at me and goes, are you okay? I go, no, I am not doing well. He's like, he, do, you need, do you need a lift home? I go, no, I, I live 10 minutes from here. I said, I'm going to think I'm going to talk to the boss and ask if I can work the rest of the day from home because I, my head just started pounding. My stomach was, I was just in pain all over. I don't know what it was. It might've been possible food poisoning. I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I felt like hell yesterday. And by around seven o'clock last night, just as the hockey game was starting, starting, I was starting to feel considerably better. And by the time I went to bed, I, you know, felt like myself again and woke up this morning feeling wonderful. So thank you to those uh, product manufacturers. There you go. Um, speaking, oh, just as we mentioned, uh, because you're much in the hockey game, uh, unfortunately, the Canadian teams have not won a match yet in the second mm-hmm. round. So uh, we need to send some uh, good energy out there to try to turn that tide around. Um, that, that whole uh, all Canadian final ain't looking too good right about now. Not right now. No. Uh, Kit Saucy asks, uh, says, have a good weekend. Everyone asks, is there an Alberta podcast this weekend? I may have missed that. There no. is not. But, but if you can't get enough beaver, okay, I'll just let that slide. Uh, if you can't no get enough. No <laughs> thank you for not jump. I was going to say thank you for not pouncing on that one. <laughs> but then again, that leads to more humor. 
you're, 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 you're lobbing them right across the plate. I, 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 you know how difficult it is to not swing at that? Low pitches right across. The, that's just like Those are your home run pitches, dude. Well, swing, baby, swing. No, uh, no, no. It's but morning. If, morning. Morning. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you put this up. Um, if, however, uh, you are looking to have additional beaver on the weekend, because as Jen Kitchen says, there's no such thing as too much beaver, uh, then you might want to check this out. Uh, Melos Early Music and Period Instruments, Early Music Choir, the choir with which I sing, is having a concert this weekend, uh, Regali Musicali, Musical Gifts and Genius. Uh, so we'll have a music that spans over a millennium of early music, history, poetry, uh, and um, the ticket, the, the concert will be on the 6th here in Kingston. Uh, but if you go to melos-earlymusic.org, uh, you can order right here an online concert YouTube ticket for $15. And uh, the show will probably be on for two full weeks. Uh, and uh, you can watch it. So if you like uh, choral music, if you like early music, 500 to about 1800, Bach is about as modern as we get, and we will have a Bach uh, in there altogether, which is really nice and quite challenging. Uh, but we will also have uh, music from uh, Turkey and music from Persia. And um, so, you know, you'll get to hear all kinds of sounds. We have uh, uh, oots and santours and recorders and cellos and, you know, whole bunch Stuff. of instruments so uh, at harpsichords uh so it's a it's a lot of fun if you're into that so uh if you are uh please check it out and uh we would really appreciate it and i'll have mr grizzly uh put a link in the chat there for you if you would like to click on that and order that all right mr grizzly please roll them credits well, just give me a sec here till I absolutely yes because I asked you to do two things at once. <laughs> I'm capable, but the computer is not responding as quickly because as I, I am a taskmaster as a beaver. That's what I am. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, oh, footnote, footnote. Oh, yes. Next Saturday. Welcome to the place where everyone knows your name, where everyone's your friend. Where good times are had by all. Sit back, relax, pour yourself a beverage, and enjoy our company. I know we'll certainly enjoy yours. Welcome to the True North Eager Beaver Pubcast. Once a month, we gather at the Lieutenant's Pump at 361 Elgin Street in downtown Ottawa, Canada's capital city, bringing you joy and happiness all day long. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, next Saturday. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, and, and Mr. Grizzly, before we go, uh, you need to put something up because I need to issue a gentle correction for myself because I lied yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> you, you snagged some tickets, I see. We're going to go. I went after we did, yeah, after we did the show, I went back online just to, I was looking at the London tickets and then I went back to the NAC one just to look and there were a couple of tickets that freed up. So nice. I pounced on them. We're going to see Amanda Marshall. Yeah, and we get an interview with her. That's the next objective. That's yes. the next objective. But as it says in that thing, when her song Sunday Morning After comes, when she sings that line, I remember saying, hey, DJ, jack the volume, I love this song. And then it all gets hazy. I'm going to be belting jack the volume, I love this song. <laughs> At the top of my lungs. So just so you're prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> so put me next to your bad ear. <laughs> that would be my right one. <laughs> All right, kids. Have a great weekend. Mwah. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
Still dancing, eh? Still dancing. You're mute. I can't hear you. I can't help it. I'm a slave to the rhythm. Can't help it. Slave to the rhythm. Wasn't that Grace, Grace Jones? Grace Jones. You know it. I'm got to slide in my queens. I got to slide in my queens. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go take my pants off. <laughs> I'm putting shorts on. It's warm in here. Settle down, people. Putting on shorts. Jeez. <laughs> y'all are, y'all are <laughs> sick and twisted. <laughs> I love the kids. <laughs> See you. <laughs> <laughs>